your wealth. So um, you probably some of you have actually been on the call um, since early the early um, part of the day, while some of you are just calling in now for the first time. So what we're going to do today is actually demonstrate to you, actually allow you to be a part of what we call our sponsor meeting. Our sponsor meeting is very much about um, everyone who is working on a uh, number of projects to come and actually present the status of their project so they can get approval to the next stage. So you tend to have the program office present <coughs> excuse me, the status of the overall portfolio and then individual projects will come and present and we tend to correct their mistakes, um, identify areas that they need to improve, uh, identify what's missing, say for example in their business case before they can get authorization, they go back and prove it and they continue like that until they get approved and that's how they kind of gain experience um, uh, through doing the actual work. So what, um, that's kind of what's happening tonight and I want you guys to actually you. Experience I that. Right. All right, so, you can, you want to, um, so you can see now that uh, that's happening, so just bear with me a second. Um, 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 you won't see me, uh, you would actually focus on the screen while I would be actually working uh, with the team but at least you can see everything that's happening on there. And um, this is an opportunity for you to learn and uh, to find out exactly what we do and how it all works. Um, so most people come back from, most, about 80% of our customer base are actually um, uh, full-time workers. They work full-time, so they come back in the evening and they call into the calls. So it's kind of like set their second job. So uh, I want to say enjoy it. Um, if you want to set up your account and actually call into the call, you can actually do that. Go to our website, careers.tv set up an account, go to project meetings, and then you can actually call into the call um, and be a part of the session. Or you can watch it from Facebook. Either way, you can be a part of what we're doing here. So, speak to you later. So what I'm going to do is just enlarge this properly so you can actually see and be a part of what we're doing here. Okay. Um, let's make sure you can actually see the entire screen. That, that should do, isn't it? That should do. Okay. Okay. I think that should cover it. All right. Good. So good luck, guys. While I get ready to start the meeting, uh, what you realize is what tends to happen. Is, uh, I think you can see how many people are on the call. So if I turn all the way here um, and bring it over here, you can see 114 people on the call. That will probably end up being around um, 200, 300 later on as people start to come back from work. Uh, but right now, you can um, watch it from here. Can you hear me? Okay, so you can see they're getting ready to present the sponsor's meeting. So good luck, guys. Have fun. Enjoy the uh, sponsor meeting. And um, I will get on with work. So can we get started? Hello? Hello? Hello kids. Hello there. Yeah. Hello kids. Yeah. Hi Shadi. I'm sorry, Mandy. Question, do we have all that meeting while our sponsor meeting is going on? Hey, I will share the radio because we make all the announcements on all the platforms. All right, so can okay, somebody go and make sure that they, no, we're not having any other meetings and everyone is coming into the sponsor meeting, please. And uh, we did mention that you should be using the DBT, the new DBT presentation. Is there a reason why the sponsor, uh, the sponsor, um, sorry, the uh, program office themselves are not using it? All right, 
let's let's we haven't got much time, so there's a lot of work to do. So let's um kick off uh, straight away, please. If you want us to start from um, where we stopped the last time as the, the project presented. It is your program office. Um, you're supposed to know what you're presenting to me. You should have an agenda for the day, right? Yeah, we have an agenda for the day. There's supposed to be an announcement from the manager, but it's not on board at the moment. And um, I just thought it's wise to carry on. Okay, so what am I going to carry on with? Presenting, and um, I just told you just carry on from the from where we stop. All right. So I mentioned this. I mentioned this last week. Okay. Program office needs to get used to doing program office office job. If you can't do it, just step down and allow other people that want to do the job to do the job. Okay. You're supposed to have a clear understanding of the, where the portfolio stands in terms of the timeline, in terms of budget, in terms of the benefits. Um, you're supposed to get information from every single project and update me on where we are. Where you're not able to do this on a weekly basis, you are wasting your time. Your job is not to do admin, okay? Your job is not to call in, hold a meeting, and then, and then, and then, and then allow other projects to present. That is a waste of time. You can get anybody else to do that. So I would have to uh, kind of place a warning now. In the event where our next sponsor meeting, I don't see any roadmap. I don't see some form of end value analysis, some form of benefit realization. We will dismantle the entire program office and get people who actually want to actually learn and do the job. I think I think we've gotten to a point where this now needs to stop. Oh my man, they um this time they hold off family and they um, do the um uh um yeah. Very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so where are we right now? Okay. You probably need to replace your program manager. There's no point waiting every single week for your program manager if we if if, if your program manager is not gonna be available every single week. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah? Well, I'm going to take control. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think I think do me a favor and don't okay. say that. Don't say that again. Okay. Don't say if I'm happy to listen to project. I shouldn't be listening to project. I should understand where we are in regards to the program office, in regards to the portfolio projects that we have. That's what I should actually be uh, uh, updated on. Then we can then speak to the projects that we need to speak to. Do you understand? Okay, so um, I'll just give you an update on how the whole thing works, uh, what's, what's been happening. Um, uh, have you guys had a session with um, uh, Yunua? Sessions with Yunua? Oh, 
Okay. So you don't know what the update is in terms of sales force. Uh, Caroline is on the call now. Can Caroline please, because I'm, I'm, I, I'm on the call with a bunch of people that don't know what's going on. Okay, um, Caroline, I, uh, you're on the call, so can you actually provide me with some level of direction on where we are and what we're doing, please? I can hear you clearly, yes. We can hear you clearly. Yes, we, we've had sessions with the, you know, I have sessions with the senior DAs, um, looking at the framework and also the new projects just being started up. Um, we're also looking at the sort of control and reporting we're going to put within that process as well. So it's, it's quite a lot of things going on, and the reason why. Um, the program office did not really prepare a presentation for you today was because last week we had four projects that were still left to present and you said the next session we have is um, it's going to be totally devoted to those four projects. No, that's not what I said. What I said was that you should so contact you me. What I said was that you should contact me the following day to actually arrange a time for me to uh, for those projects to present because this week we'll be carrying on with um, um, the rest of, with the next stage of where we are, but we're carrying on with the next stages. That was what I said, nobody contacted me, so I couldn't actually have any session with anybody as a result of that. But even then, I should still get an update from the program office on what's been done. Can I say that our whole preventive portfolio of this? Sorry? Um, actually, hi Olive. Um, Olive is the program manager. So, Olive, can you please shed some light? Um, hello, hi Olive. Hi Caroline. Hi, um, can you just shed some light on the work that's going on within your team? The, um, for the um, DX team, uh, we're still working on the we're still working on the um, backlog, the um, the portfolio and program back backlog, and also um, updating the uh, projects, the new projects that are coming up. Okay, can I see it? I mean, you're not going to call into a meeting without some level of presentation. So, can I see it? Can I see the progress of what you're doing? And if you can't do the job, just let me know so we can replace you. It's just that simple. on with that I would um, update you on where we are and uh, the progress the problem we're having right now is my fear is that we're carrying on business as usual and you're so way behind that you're going to miss out on important things that you need to be learning and um, the, the issue here is, is the program office you know I think the problem is consist consistently the problem is with the program office of the screen. Sorry? Do yeah, I have to see it? Alright, so you can see my screen, right? Yes, it yes. can. Yes. Okay. Bear with me in a second. On the call. Hi, 
Hello. Hi, it's Tony here. Mm -hmm. So sorry, I'm not home yet. That's why I can't. That's why I'm not able to join. Oh, yeah, but it's, um, what? What? Here's the thing. If you're the first person to do this from office. Yeah, you're you're selected as the person that's chairing the meeting. But if you're not going to be in the meeting to chair the meeting, then you need to hand it over to somebody who is capable enough to chair the meeting. I, th I think no will have this meeting tonight. Uh, we it's agree. Another meeting that I plan to. We agree that we we'll, we agree that we we'll have a sponsor meeting every Monday. I think. Uh, really confused now. Monday and Thursday. Oh. 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 Okay, uh, sorry about that, but can you give me some time to give me just a moment? If you need any clarification, then I can do that. Huh? Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll just uh, quickly, I'll just try and get you know, onto the call. We've um, we've got, we've got Okay, if I can explain to you, okay, if you're just going in or my seven was in or yesterday we walked on the portfolio and my seven was in or we walked on it today as well. We walked for hours on it today. Uh, what we try to do today is actually to break the, uh, the portfolio into the program and into the project. You may not see it from Jira right now because we don't want to just mess up things. We, what we agreed to do is to make sure that we spell everything out. We have all the projects, we spelled it out. Uh, we did it on uh, the documents on G-Drive. But we want to make sure that uh, what we've done is what should be on Jira. So we don't just populate Jira for no reason. Not only that, we plan that uh, tonight, I plan that I will speak to everybody to get themselves uh, self trained with the link that we have on Jira portfolio and we plan that on Thursday evening we would have a session whereby we put everybody through on uh, Jira portfolio. But in, regarding the project, we've broken everything down, the project, the program and some of the concerns that we have as well is known to it. So that I was hoping that I would you know be able to get home early today so that I can uh, uh, raise that with you, uh, especially on the high mental, we have, uh, we have some concerns that perhaps we shouldn't make an app, uh, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, uh, become too much, uh, because we want to really make the e-work experience to become a one-stop shop, so that whatever people want to do, we could make the high mental to be a feature, rather than making it an app. Um, so, if you didn't get an email, so you know, I uh, would be able to explain some of these things to you, but we've worked on it, and last night as well, we worked on it, we, uh, the iMentor as well, we worked on all the, um, the customer journey and everything last night, uh, if Ado is on the call, uh, I, Caroline was on the call as well, and Many people on the call was on the call with us last night as well. So we worked on it, and today as well, myself, I don't know, I've been working tirelessly on it. Okay. Uh, this I'll is just... why I'm saying the last few captures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there a time, can I, can I get, um, I think it's, it'd be better to now speak to you now and get an update on um, um, so you can expand shape a lot more while you focus on getting home? All right, as soon as the UNO gets on the call, please let me know. Um, as soon as the UNO gets on the call, please let me know. And then um, um, hopefully I can talk to her. Uh, all right, so just while you guys are carrying on, uh, once again, as soon as the UNO gets on the call, let me know so that I can unmute her and I can actually talk to her. So I feel, at least, because right now I'm a bit worried that um, nobody uh, knows what's going on. But. From what you told me, that's some level of information. Everything is on. Yeah, every, everything is on call, KJ. We're working. Everybody is working on this, and it's it's moving. Yeah, but the problem, the problem, the problem here is your communication. The problem here is the communication strategies. I'm, I'm a bit worried that there is no way to manage my expectation. 
in terms of letting me know that you are on top of it. Right now, all I can see is just sheer incompetency. Share, nobody knows what's going on. Share, nobody cares. Share, uh, people calling in whenever they want. People not remember they have a sponsor meeting. So this is, what, that's all I'm seeing. That's what's being portrayed to me. So you might be working hard in the background, but if I can't see the result, if I can't, if it's not communicated through to me, through some level of status um, uh, update, through some level of progress update, through some level of, um, 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 yeah, through any of those two, uh, from a program level, then all I can, all I see is nothing is being done. I hope you understand that. I see we know is actually on the call, so I feel some level of confidence at least. Um, I'm going to have to try and call her, because I can't see her here, yet. Alright, as soon as you text him, just let me know. But um, I'll just give an update on where we are. So, in line with the entire transformation initiative that we're working on, um, I think we can. Oh, you know, why are you not on the call? Hello? Oh, you know? Hello? Yeah, you're not on the call. Yeah, I'll just come on base. I'm trying to find the meeting link. Just a minute or two, I'll be on. But um, why would it be fine? Why why is it too difficult to find on Basecamp? Did not it put on the headquarters dashboard? Yeah, well, Basecamp is slow. So okay, then can I send it to you by Skype? Hello. Can I send it to you by Skype? Yeah. Okay. The problem we're having is I I did say this. The thing is, I hate being right. I hate being right. Uh, I really hate it because at that point I'm thinking I should have just stuck to my guns. Every single time I'm right about something and somebody forces me to change my mind, it pisses me off. Alright, so you should have the link now. You should be able to call in. Okay. And then we can actually talk proper business because right now nobody here knows what they're talking about. Um, so let's carry on. Okay, so um, I'll wait for you now to call in, but as you all know, one of the things we've been doing is working on um, um, Salesforce, so Salesforce ECRM. Um, the key area for us is to clean up the data, to um, 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 create uh, meaningful reports, to segment the, um, to uh, be able to, you know, uh, to do segmentation, um, and then also to create a pretty impressive pipeline and then integrate with Salesforce uh, wave analytics where we can now start doing business intelligence. So um, I think we've made some massive progress on there. Um, what is a shame is if not much work has been done on your end on a project level while the company is carrying on and moving further ahead. I keep explaining this time and time again where you are learning what has been done. It is not the same as being part of doing the job. Um, and the company will not pause in order for you to catch up. You have to get your hands dirty and get involved and be up to date. And that's the kind of issue. I think that's what we're having with, um, with the program office, where the company is way ahead, you know, and they're still following, they're still kind of, they're still kind of stuck in the past when they need to catch up, you know. And um, what that starts to produce is some uh, high levels of incompetency. Um, and this is one of the problems that a lot of companies are facing. As they're moving towards digital transformation, um, um, they're realizing that the old school people don't want to change and they're just holding the company back, you know, and that's not good for any company at all. And obviously it's not good for us either because we've dramatically changed. And I'll give you an example. Hopefully when a you know, calls in, she'll be able to show you the report for last month. Um, based on our transformation program, we have now seen a dramatic decline in our weekly intensive programs. 
we've seen a dramatic decline in our weekly intensive program and an extra, an, a, a dramatic increase in online which is pretty when you think about it is pretty impressive that was actually what we wanted to do so this month 86.1 percent was um of the business of the business was actually of the business revenue was actually generated uh, sorry um yeah, it was actually generated online if i'm right about that i'm not even sure but it no 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 actually no 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 so there's not 86 but it, i don't even know what that percentage is because actually you can you can say that 86 percent was actually online which is which is not that bad at all for us as a business because that's what we were trying to do however we do need to make sure that operations so, so we might have been able to go online build the technology to put us in a position where we can go online but in terms of our operational process in terms of our raw business model um we've realized that actually that is changing as well so um the way we would kind of um the, our business model last month is automatically different from our business model this month and it's quite a shock to everybody why is it a shock to everybody because this is something this is a transition that will normally take time you know but because we work in um, an agile environment and because technology is constantly changing it's something that is happening so quickly and it's, it's a massive culture shock and it's almost as if we need a cushion for um, um, um uh, we need a cushion so that people don't literally break as a result of this massive change and we don't start ending up losing um, employees because they're just not up to date or they don't know what they're doing okay but um, the good news is that the reports are actually now being created we're actually in fact I can even go to today's list for example and you can see that you know has created some really cool reports we're already playing with the dashboard now uh, with the dashboard what's really cool is that we can see performance company performance by the dashboard so we can actually identify who's actually working who's not you know, from customer service level all the way to um sales, le sales level which is also good as well um so this is so so we're actually making good use of salesforce now we're not there yet but we're, we're at least um, getting to a point where things are working then if we move over to analytics salesforce wave analysis where we where, where we look into business intelligence um obviously that i think she's still working on because there's not much done here but at least you can see that there's some level of progress um, where you are on that project, I would like to know so we can see how far you are in regards to what we have actually um, achieved as a company. You know, same also for platform integration, same also, also for um, iMentor. It would be good to know what you guys have done because we actually keep talk today and we, ca we achieved a great deal of things um, in regards to where we're going. But um, hopefully, Yuna is on the call now and then we can actually get some proper update and know exactly where we are so uh just bear with me a second so is you know on the call now yeah, yes yeah, call. thank god all right well, you know so let's let's quickly um catch up and um talk about what we've achieved along the um in regards to um our portfolio um what what benefits have we started to realize uh what risk has uh, risen as a result of um obviously moving too fast and um, um, what's in the pipeline? And um, let's let's discuss this, and then hopefully uh, we can carry on from there. So, um, do you want to get control, or do you are you okay to um, um, direct me while I have control? Well, um, right now, okay. Actually, we're we're facing. So you know, like what they were mentioning about how the company is running ahead um, of teams. Mm -hmm. We're having a few a few challenges kind of aligning aligning our work with the team. Mm -hmm. So today Sammy and I had a meeting to start a portfolio for Jira and put um our projects and things on there. But what we realized was that um we needed the work breakdowns or the the should I say tasks um, slash user stories from each team. To be able to do this and because this is not something that most teams have got into um, we were crippled it's a huge blocker for us um one of the things that uh, Femi and i did though was to complete the, the list of projects um on the portfolio because a lot of projects are not even aware that they're now programmed so there's a there's a lot of updates and things that need to happen across board which is why I still have to carry on with work while, you know, in the background or waiting for all of these um, things to be updated and for teams to be up to speed. Um, so with regards to the work, with regards to uh, the CRM, 
I was able to create a sandbox uh, to be able to start testing changes because one thing I realized, especially because I was delivering that Salesforce training, so I had to do a lot more research and discover you know, a lot more about functionality, is that since we are now relying on um, reports that Salesforce gives us to run as a business, as opposed to before when we were flying blind, um, we can't afford to now just go and start making big changes live. So, because we're having to clean the data, we're having to change configuration and stuff, we have to be careful. We have to do them and test them on sandbox environment first and then roll them out um, incrementally. So, the ECRM program now needs to be reconfigured so that we know which of the uh, projects are doing what. Right now, ECRM is functioning as a project, but actually it's a program. Okay, you've seen what I've did today. Yeah, I've seen uh, that. Whereby I try to customize. Yeah, I tried to customize it to make it more more um, functional because what we had there was a dashboard that relies on data we don't yet have on, on Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do was make it more more um, relevant mm -hmm. to what we're doing today. I wanted to change the bottom chart to a, a circle basically so that you can see based on how we're doing uh, for the month, mm -hmm. based on how many leads are we have as coming for the month, um, and compared to how many people we've enrolled, we know okay what percentage we are closing. Mm -hmm. But another thing I worked on today was to try and see without having to chase people about and make a thousand calls chasing people to, for updates. I wanted to see based on Salesforce activity how many people have we spoken to today. Mm -hmm. So if you go on dashboards for example. Mm -hmm. You should see one that says CI 360 view. It's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. But CI 360 view. I found a report that basically um, records a call that's been made on every um, profile. Mm -hmm. So say for example, if you see calls logged today, mm -hmm. somebody made a call and didn't log it, mm -hmm. then it's their loss because they can't see that they, they actually made that call. Mm -hmm. So I want, for example, you can see on there, it said Ifemi has only made uh, about six, what's that, six calls mm -hmm. today, calls locked today, underneath the, the gate. Mm -hmm. So I set a gauge that says, okay, between zero and hundred, let's see how we're doing for calling people. Mm -hmm. Now, we know how many payments are outstanding um, as compared to the relationship manager that is handling that account. Mm -hmm. So if you have 40 people owing us and they are making calls in day. Mm -hmm. I now have to ask you what you've been doing with the entire day. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the data, I'm not you know, whether you you you're um, updating me or not. So mm -hmm. now I have to I have to basically take action based on what the data is telling me without mm -hmm. having to waste time in NS meetings with the staff. So you see that I'm not lying now, right? So if they refuse to update yeah, so if, if they are not updating the CRM system then it's not is their loss basically? Maybe nobody's getting paid for today. So, exactly. Okay, good. All right. All right, that's fine. So, we're already working on the dashboard now. Uh, one of the things I wanted, because I'm really impressed with what I've seen, and I mean, it, it really, I mean, I was looking at it and it, it put me in a position where I felt great, I can make great decisions here. You know, I even looked at the, um, I, I, I checked the today's leads and everything. Um, how do I check last month? Because that's another thing I wanted to, because one of the things I would like to do is to benchmark. Benchmark the last three months compared to this month yeah. and see that. So only, I'm only looking at February 2017, but how do I look at January 2017 and how do I have this report already done automatically? way is on each report while we are looking at it to um, to adjust the dates however if you want to be able to compare side by side mm -hmm. then I would have to have them already created and saved okay. for you so look at this one for example it says February 2017 mm -hmm. you can see that I'm looking at candidates whose training start date mm -hmm. whose training start date was either greater than the first mm -hmm. of February or less than the first of March, which mm -hmm. means that the training start date must fall inside February. Mm -hmm. 
So if you click on those filters, you can change. No, no, um, is that static that you are? Okay. Yeah, that's static. No, 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 no. Don't, don't cancel that. Cancel that. That is the created date. So that's the date that that link was created on Salesforce. That date could have been any time, actually. Okay, so I'm doing the training starting. So that link could have come, yes. So what this is what you want to pay. Yes. So if you want it to be greater than 1st of Feb uh, January. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then you can see January to date. Uh, I have the training start date greater than. Or you than. can say less than. Uh, yeah, you can say less than uh, 1st of Feb February. So it, it falls, everything falls inside of January. Okay. And I apply that, right? So you go back to that created date and make it all. No, no. Created date for the lead must be all time because the lead could have been created at any date. Must be what? Yes. So range should be all time. Yes. Done. Okay. So can we have this? Like, can we have this pre um, Can we have this report pre filled? Is that possible? So I can have them side by side and see the progress we've made. So rather than me having to create the report separately. Yes. Okay, that's good. So yes. if so, you guys can so see. We do every time. Go on. Yeah, I will, I, will, I will save it so that it's in your folder. You mm -hmm. can always go and, and, and um, just pick it. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, so uh, there's a, the, 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 the thing about it is that there's a drastic change, which is a worry for me. Um, where, where do I go? Candidates enroll this month. Okay, good. So I go to candidates enroll this month. Okay, and then I go to where? Where do I go to? I go to the training date and make so it custom will be all right, all time, and then uh, training start date will yeah. be January. Yeah. So, um, so I don't. I want to actually compare the difference now and uh, understand the actual problem that we're facing, which is um, it, are we moving? Is technology enabling us to move faster? And in terms of the team that can actually get the job done are they capable enough to be able to do it uh because that could lead to uh sometimes you can be moving so fast mm. that your team is not ready to um uh are not equipped to do the job and then it becomes first, a total first disaster of February. right first of yeah, February. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i first got of it February. i got it i got it i got it yeah. so first of february okay good all right so i'm done on there and um apply that so if I look at it from lap, I mean, you can see over here, okay, so the online here, you can see weekend intensive, which is standard for us, you can see weekly intensive, so we can see the dramatic drop, does that make sense? Now, the truth of the matter is that you compare this, and online over here, you can see that um, online obviously started growing, alright, however, um, oh, you know, oh, you know, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Are people, yes, owning, are people still owing us money from January? Yes. Why on earth are people owing us money from January? All right, let's come back over here. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I mean, unless your data is not correct. Tomorrow. Okay, so if I come back. I don't to, think it's fully updated. I would. I would, I would yeah. Okay, so if I come back over here now uh, to February, uh, I can see the dramatic. Uh, is it? What am I going to? What am I going to do? Less than, so during the Saturday greater than 1st of February, less than what? 1st of March, right? Okay, good. So I then just apply that. Okay, and I should be able to see a dramatic, you can see. So this is shocking for us. It's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a shock to the system. Um, uh, fine, I caused it <laughs> because I'm the one that wanted to make it happen. You know, and um, it also we can see a dramatic increase in revenue as well. We've already almost uh, gotten how much we got in for last month, and there's still a balance due before the end of the month. So actually, not bad at all. However, uh, do we have the resources, the capability, uh, in order to actually manage this? This is another question that we now need to ask ourselves. Something the program office needs to be aware of, and something they need to do that that we now need to. When it comes to prioritizing our portfolio. We now need to decide what is the next thing we need to be working on, you know, because I'm saying that iMentor is the next thing that we need to work on. Uh, but at the same time, um, could it be something else that we need to work on? So I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So if I go back here 
We're realizing that everybody is going online. Is the experience better online? Is it easy for people to set up their accounts easily online? Because if we're going 100% online, you're, what you're doing is that you're, let, you're, 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 you're removing the human, human touch and you're hoping that the um, application or the technology can sort out whatever issues that you have in terms of communicating with that customer. So um, is it very easy for the user to actually set up an account without having to um, have any issues here and there? So that is one question we've got to ask ourselves. Sorry guys, I need to log in. Um, if you just bear with me a second, I'll just um, unmute. I don't know why this guy keeps changing his password 24-7 and then I can't log in. Um, I'm just going to come coming back here very soon. Um, and also to you guys, I'm going to Okay. So I can get my password and log in. Uh, oh, you know, can you hear me? Hello, you know? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, talk to I me. You. Talk to me about uh, well, let's move moving on to platform integration. Talk to me about the voice because that's another area that um, is very important to us, and I'm hoping that the entire team has been trained and they're ready, and we're ready to switch over to voice right now. So that we know we are switching off um, 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 easy contact. Um, I want to make it Wednesday, which is kind of midweek. All right. So, so we would have had some momentum for the week, and then yeah. All right. So in terms of what is going live first, um, going live this week, that means that the platform integration in regards to VoIP. First of all, the implementation of our VoIP system um, is one. Um, integrating that with Salesforce is two, and that should be on the top of the part of the, of the portfolio, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Does the program office know this? I did send an update to the VoIP team, mm -hmm. uh, copying them in with uh, an update thing with Swift Easy Contact. So, you know, at first they were supposed to uh, help us do like a market research and yeah. find a solution to buy that. Since we've done that for ourselves, there was no need for them to then waste time okay. on it. So they did get um, an update to that effect. And in regards to benefit realization, can we comfortably say that we've seen a drop in support calls in regards to people being added to projects and um, and uh, an improving in customer service. Can we can we comfortably say that? Oh my God! Definitely. Oh. Okay, but then, uh, but then this, remember, this is, I, I know. Oh, you know. Oh, you know. One second. Oh, you know. This is this is this is where I'm going with this. I, I, I know. You don't need to tell me. I know. You know. But from the program office perspective, do they know? From the program office perspective, do they actually know the rate at which? Um, so, so, so can, they, can they actually provide a chart to show us that support calls has dropped by 80%, for example, and customer satisfaction has increased by 40%, and benefit realization is ABC as a result of the completion of this project? Can they actually do that? Yeah. Do you get my point? Because what's happening is they're calling in and they're saying, oh, we're about to present the next project. Oh, is, is that what you're going to... The truth of the matter is that when you apply for work, do you think that's what's going to happen? You're wasting your time. You're, 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 you're literally wasting your time being here by doing that. Because when you work on the program level, you're not going to be sitting down there trying to present what other projects have done. You know, so that's, that's where I am getting extremely irritated. You know, because when we think about it, um, um, there has been some serious benefitization as a result of the implementation of certain projects or certain programs. And the program office, even though they are behind, still need to be updated on this and still need to report that. They should not assume that I know. They should present to me and let me know that, you know what, we're on top of the game and everything is going well. 
Okay, because for example, um, so, but, but, you know what, carry on um, and explain to me, um, let me know actually what the, the progress is for the benefit of everyone else on the call. Okay, when we first had the issue, you know, we had, there was a, 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 an issue that made us have to take a lot of people off uh, multiple projects and make them, you know, send in their selections. Mm -hmm. um, we found that we were dealing with hundreds of requests. I mean, our Zendex was flooded with requests. Our, the spreadsheet that Caroline and Ola set up to manage those queries were absolutely flooded with requests. So you needed at least four hands a day dealing with base camp only. You know, now base camp queries are only about five or six. You know, every couple of days, you don't have that many anymore. And that is just as a result of that single API integration. Okay, so you're telling me that five or six, right? And before there were hundreds, right? Yes. All right, so really and truly, yeah. we can say that support calls have dropped by close to 95 to 92 percent, which frees up time. <laughs> that's that. that. So, so if you, the vendor also, if you measure the customer satisfaction level, that should actually that should spike up as well. So, in regards to our digital initiative, where we're looking to be um, uh, customer centric and looking to digitize and automate every area of the business, we can say that we're beginning to experience the benefits and actually put a value on it, put a value in it in terms of money, put a value in it in terms of time, put a value in it in terms of quality. This is the work that the program office should be doing. Not sitting down and, and being babysitter for projects. Who asked you? Okay. Alright, so that said, um, let's talk about, let, let, I'm hoping that right after this session, the program office is actually meeting up with a new, you know, and talking proper business and understanding what's going on in the company, okay? So, so, that, so that you're updating people. I have told you guys a hundred times, I am not interested in you sitting down and listening to videos all day. I'm not interested in you sitting down and, um, and, 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 and listening. Listening is not going to get you a job. Doing the work is what's going to get you a job. That's what's going to get you your four, five hundred pounds a day because you have to demonstrate your experience, you know. So you need to start getting your hands dirty and understanding what's going on here. The people who are doing it are getting the jobs and we want to increase those success stories. So unfortunately, we're going to have to be extremely harsh on everyone who actually probably is not doing anything. Okay, now, um, Fine, we have, in, we have done a few platform integration here, here and there. Have we experienced any issues or any potential risk that is now detrimental to the business as a whole? Or you know? This kind of integration, we found that um, people who were registering for the free trial using their personal email addresses are... Uh, um, were able to obviously add themselves to projects which would invite them to base camp mm -hmm. and those invitations would get sent to their personal email address all right so that's a and when you receive an invitation to your personal email address and you have to carry sorry? on no carry on carry on sorry I, I just said that's a breach but um carry on that's a security issue right so there. when you accept yes when you accept that invitation you are a part of the project you then have access to download whatever materials you find on there. And you are basically free to access our intellectual property. Now we do have the protection that our NDAs and our um, non copies and all of that provide us with. However, we are exposed to that risk because before you before you discover those people that they have gone ahead and so you know, proprietary information or, or um, um, what do they call that, that intelligence, uh, that, I'm forgetting the terminology now, but your, um, oh, 
basically company property, you know, is what I'm trying to say. But intellectual, intellectual property is, is that mm -hmm. the term. So that is the risk, that's the bug that was discovered um, last week. And the QA team spent came testing and testing and finding uh, regretting test case scenarios to put on Jira for Anton mm -hmm. uh, to fix. So by tomorrow, I'm sure that that by the time they retest again, we'll be able to get confirmation mm -hmm. that that has now been fully resolved. Okay. Uh, but because the what should be happening if you have a personal email, you should be prompted to buy a full subscription. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that be resolved now. So, that's that's what should be happening. Has that been resolved now? Um, again, we need to retest. Okay, so that's it's something. It's been locked and it's been worked on, but we we haven't. Yeah, retested. now that's that kind of a thing. For example, should be should be it should be number one priority when we come to our BAEs. Does it make sense? Everything must stop, and that must be resolved first, because that actually that that puts the business at risk. When you assess the once again, program office will have assessed that. Program also should have been aware of that. They must have assessed the risk and realized that it's a very high risk and they should have pushed for that to be resolved within the next 24 hours before we actually go get on with any other thing. All right, one of the things I found as well was that uh, when you leave a project, um, so I've, what I've just done right now, I've just clicked on my projects and I've, I've, I've been brought up to all the projects. So that's, some, that's a bug I've found that needs to be fixed. I'm going to try and leave this project and actually see that if I leave a project is updated on Basecamp. Because that was a bug I found over the weekend. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm actually just going to refresh Basecamp and make sure that when I'm on Basecamp, the project I've left has actually been taken off. Um, I think it was, oh good, so it's, it's been taken off. So I'm going to go to VoIP and leave VoIP need the void project um if i can find the void that is um now is the search refined because i noticed that the set was not okay it's good it's refined so i'm going to leave this project as well okay and uh hopefully if i do that i'll be able to see that um it's actually i've actually left this project okay good so that's working now so that was a bug i found and i logged that um, earlier this weekend. Now, um, what I noticed as well, which I will love right now, is that I can't actually view my projects. Um, so if I want to just filter by my own projects, I can't actually view it. Uh, which, for some reason, in terms of usability, how do we miss that? That's, I don't get it. So if I click on four projects, selected projects right now, I actually cannot view that. So I'm just going to go on um, Jira quickly and update that um, so that it's there. Uh, what is it? It's on that eWork Experience QA, right? Does Anton know yeah. that every single day he should check this and identify what's a priority? That's something program office should yeah. be doing. Okay. Um, so we have quite a lot of things here. So I, I, I couldn't even tell you what one has been prioritized has to be done first. You know, so, uh, but let me just come over here and... Um, just... Whatever it says on the selected for development. Okay, cool. All right, so if I come over here... No, I know, I know. I'm just saying I don't know if it's been prioritized. Um, now, is this a task improvement or new feature? I would say it's, I mean, it, I would say it's a new feature because we didn't actually put it in there before. Um, and I'll just, sorry? Okay. So, I... So, what you want is a, an additional view, which mm -hmm. is my projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. 
Uh, I think this phone should be resolved ASAP. Uh, when it comes, I think user experience should always take precedence. Uh, major security issues should take precedence. User experience should also take precedence as well. Um, uh, component is on that project. Do we actually have it here? Have we added it? Oh, okay, good. And uh, I'll make that critical. Um, as Anton updated you on what we are with First Bank. Oh, you know. Yeah. Okay, one second. Let me see if I can get hold of him. Oh, what just happened there? Oh God, what just happened there? Did I just put it somewhere? I shouldn't have put it. Okay, I can see it. I'll come back here and review this up in due time so that um, I can prioritize it accordingly. Uh, but I would really appreciate it if Program Office is the one that is actually prioritizing this based on them being clearly uh, aware of what immediate, mid-term and long-term business value is to us in regards to our overall portfolio. I think I would really appreciate that. Okay, so um, in that respect, uh, let's come back to our platform, coming back to our, uh, coming back to the platform integration. Um, what 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 are the teething issues that we're experiencing in regards to go to webinar integration because um it's a really good thing let, let me just give you an example I, I feel that this weekend was a bit of disaster partly my fault so i'll take the blame for that but what i've been realizing is that okay, if you look over here now we have 589 registrants now you remember you told me that um it's better we don't change the idea and people just keep registering but the problem is that the timeline there is actually not correct anymore now so I'm now worried about the fact that people are registering, but they are not getting the actual ID, uh, the actual correct ID. So they were calling in and I have to now literally send them a new link to actually join an ID. So the manual process stepped in. Although I have automated a particular part, but because the timeline, the calendar is not in real time, it's a bit of an issue for me. So I'm thinking to myself that maybe this now needs to be a, 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 an intro thing. So this is a permanent intro thing. I don't know if it makes sense. And then we then have yes, a separate yes. meeting and ID. When people exactly, and they need to be given that offline, like they need to be given that um privately. Privately, once they have been set up. Okay, that's good. So that's what's that. So out. in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's sort that out. Now the only problem I have as well is I have Nigeria and UK being combined here. Now, is that okay, or can I actually filter that in the, um, what do you call it, can I actually filter that in, um, in, in, on Salesforce so that I don't have to be looking at literally a bunch of Nigerian numbers. Then also, the international code for other countries. Now, we're beginning to have people from the United States registering, we're beginning to have people from Canada registering. The only problem I'm now having is that um, the international code, I don't think it's coming out correctly, which is a bit of a disaster for me. So it's almost an invalid lead, eventually. When you say international codes, so you mean when we are collecting location information? Yeah, location. Yeah, but well, the location. I don't think I'm worried about the location. Yeah, location doesn't always appear. One, um, location doesn't always appear. One, and then the phone numbers. I don't get the full code. So I, sometimes I don't even know when the location doesn't appear. I don't even know where the code is. You know. So if you're not familiar with a particular country's number, then obviously right. that tends to affect the ability to. Um, um, convert that lead because you don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? I think, yes, I think with the work that eBay is doing um, to improve our current uh, ability for everybody to make payments online, we need to make it possible for them to start to basically convert online so start do the free trial go and pay online and do everything yourself yeah oh well, you know i know yeah. what the problem is we look. need to create that functionality at that look I, that's the problem we didn't that wasn't required oh required yeah. yeah so now i need to check so now we need to check with anton to make sure that that is a required field when they do register as well 
So that's one book found. Oh, right. Got yeah, you. that's okay. one book. That's found that. So that's okay. So in regards to this, everything is working fine. The problem is just the little bug we just found there. Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine there. Yeah. Okay. So we're good. We're good in that respect. So in terms of progress, we are making progress. Would you agree with that? I do agree. We are seeing visible results, mm -hmm. um, making you know progress, growing in it week on week. There's something new and something you know improved, which is great. Okay. Well, I would like to improve the user experience on the eWork Experience platform. I think that should take precedence uh, over iMentor uh, because right now, can people still select a mentor? Yes. So um, we can. We uh, we will still implement that. Uh, but I just want to improve the user experience. So I believe that you have a project called um, pro a project on that DX Mobile that's focused on UX experience, right? The user experience for the eWork Experience platform. Yes, so that's the mobile users. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Kevin told me today that you wanted a project set up called. Uh, Kevin told me today you wanted a project set up called uh, the DX UX, and they will be looking at um. Overall, yeah, yes, yes, that, that, so that, and that that was last week. That was last week. So I'm hoping that they set that up, and I was even hoping that they will be able to present to me. So I'll give you an example. So for, um, um, let me tell you the issues we're having, um, which is annoying right now, is the fact that people set up their account. And then they get, they obviously have to have their career insights email created. Then they have to have a lot of things created. I'm actually now looking at Google integration, total Google into the Google, Google apps integration. So what do I mean by that? Basically, as you set up the account, you actually um, create your career insights Google email, you know, um, so your career insights email using Google, the Google um, uh, business app. But at the same time, um, you're able to sign your contract, do everything in one go. I just want to, so rather than people waiting forever to, um, they don't know whether the contract is coming to one email or the second email, even though we've said it over and over again, but we have to factor in the fact, we have to factor in that not everybody would understand that. So it's just looking at making the experience a lot more uh, seamless and easy. Yeah. Because if you're going 100% online okay. and people have, it's all the first experience is the most important experience. So if I can't access what I want to access, then you probably lost me as a business right there and then. But if I can get in, hit the ground running straight away, then I, you have gained my attention. Make sense? All right. Okay. So that's why to me UX probably comes first right now. Uh, can we confirm that all the meeting IDs, because when you have nine no, meetings, Go on. Go on. Yeah, I was just going to ask. So basically, uh, we need we need to obviously document that journey that we have right now and all those touch points and how the see how and make them seamless. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be an as is and it should be, mm -hmm. which we should be presenting to you to say yes, go ahead with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, if you look over here, um, my worry, we, I, I don't know if we've um, agreed with the con new contract where you have 20, is it 50 go-to meeting IDs? Have we accepted that or not? It's 13 go-to meeting. We've set those up. Uh, we've set up. I was told 50. Never, Caroline, told me, Caroline told me 50. No, no, no. Thirteen. 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 Okay, so 13 go-to meetings. How many go-to webinars? Uh, well, we have three at the moment, but by next month, after the meetings are being in use, we're going to put them down to two, so that we don't add any more costs to it. Basically, the cost of one webinar will replace, the, co the cost of the 13 meetings will replace the cost of one webinar. Okay. But, but if we're driving down operational costs, um, letting go of certain offices, can't we now increase the cost and have three webinars on 13, um, what do you call it? I suppose 
we can. I so that that way, that way, nobody has problems with meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. If you keep that. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Hello. Three webinars will not be enough for almost thirty. Three webinars will not be enough for almost thirty projects, and that's why um, the capacity for the go to has been changed. Um, initially it was like 26 people, but now it can accommodate up to 50 people. So for the project team meetings, 50, um, good web, sorry, good meeting with 50 is not than enough. Okay, so that, that's fair, but what I'm saying is that instead of cancelling one go to webinar account, just have that extra webinar account anyway. So there's more capacity. Yeah, the thing there. is, um, it, what we're struggling with is actually um, uh, meetings for the projects. Our webinar is normally used for your meetings and you know other uh, departmental meetings. Okay. So we're still going to be able to retain two webinars. Okay. As yeah. long as it works. As long Most as it works. of the time when we have a webinar, such as if there is nothing to say for you, what happens to the same? You know what? No, you know what? Have three. Have, have three. Have three. I, I know where I'm going with this. Have three and keep the um, 13 go to webinars that can take 50 people. So that that way it can pass. Because look, we're 100% we're online now. So if we're 100% online, the last thing we want is people complaining that they can't call into a call. That's just disastrous. You know, because when you think about it, 5,000 pounds office rent compared to 100 and something pounds extra go to webinar account is not that bad at all. As long as it's all integrated into the calendar. I agree. Yeah. So my question, you know, if you could just take this down. First thing tomorrow, if you can work with Anton to make sure that all the meetings, all the meetings, all 13 go to meeting webinar IDs and three webinar accounts are reflected on the calendar. That is absolutely critical. So that that way everybody is aware of every single meeting that's been held in the company. Okay. And um, also, um, Caroline, I, I think I think can, can we can we can we delete can we delete this? I think you talk I, I think over and over again. You keep showing me. I keep seeing this thing. You said you're going to resolve it. It's still here. Can we delete it, please? I don't know what it means. One of the mentors, um, I've actually thought I have to change it. So but if I you haven't delete changed it, just delete it. Um, sorry, just a quick one, Katie. You know, with this um, calendar here, mm -hmm. it's possible to actually highlight one for each, you know, for the particular date you're looking at. So, for instance, today is the 20th of February. But if you scroll down on that calendar, I know you've got the darker shade of grey um, to highlight the day. But if you can have a different color, so that it's more visible. In fact, probably what should come up is the meetings for the day first and then they can do the rest of the calendar. So that means the user experience needs yeah. to change, which means that you need to spec that out and put it into Jira and then prioritize that accordingly. Okay, Especially when we start using the 13 additional... Alright, well you need to put that into your portfolio and then um, prioritize it accordingly so that um, and then spec it out, get the QA team spec that out or it maybe you can in fact that will be part of the user experience team so the user experience team should actually be responsible for this um the, the, the we're going to make sure that the user experience team actually go and listen to the videos on user experience and actually start doing some research on user experience so that that way they're, they're doing this based on experience and not um just based on what they think okay so that seems to be sorted out um what else Okay, so that, uh, if I, can, I, can I see the portfolio, please? Um, because that, that's another thing, it's just so important. Because if I can see the portfolio, I know exactly what's important, I know exactly what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. Um, can I see it or do I have to open my own? I'm not sure if she's, she's on the call because I'm on my phone, so I can't really see the attended list. So I just want to find out um Femi's back on because he's got the phone. And we're not only one of the call. Okay, hi Ollie. Okay, 
can we talk about this? Um, can you not work yet? I just maybe I can share with you what Femi and I were working with today, Kitty. Yeah, please, thank you. Um, to put for the list of projects. I think it has the full list. Show me. start looking deeper into Google Business Suite. Um, reason being is because I see some seriously cool integration with that. So some of these are not being uh, no, not yet. Basically, we what to, what we did today was to add some of them, break them down from from because some of platform integration, for example, it was operating as a project, so mm -hmm. I had to break it down into a program. Into at a last. program thank and you, then, thank you know, very much. At last. Right. thank you very much. Okay, good. And then, same thing with mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so you see, same thing with mobility, but we broke down and took it back and broke down, so we're kind of a bit skeptical with that one. Then strategy and implementation. Um, KJ, can we mention one additional one, which I don't think we got to document, but social media, site market, marketing and analytics, uh, UX, those are all part of our uh, social uh, marketing. Yeah, I did mention to him uh, the channel. I did, I did mention the channel to him. I, you see, the thing about it is that DXDM social media, DXDM search and search marketing analytics, DXDM, um, I don't know what DX, DXUX is, uh, because that will fall under the user yes, experience. Yes, experience. That will fall under the user experience project. Then you, have, and then you have DXESP. Email, um, email, sorry, DX email marketing. You have DX. So basically, all of the digital channels. I broke this thing down. I listed each of these things, and I said that it falls under digital marketing. You know, that's the problem. It's almost as if I say these things and they're not taken the on board. Is, but the thing is, with the ESP, what we decided was we should probably just expand the scope of the ESP project rather than having one project integrating an ESP into the first. While a separate project decides on the email marketing strategy. Yeah, which falls on that so DXDM. Of, because we already have. 
Right. Do you understand? Okay. So, so I, I, I repeat it again. Okay. DXDM okay. covers all the digital marketing channels. So the digital marketing channels that we use as a business, DXDM social media, DXDM uh, search and marketing analyt uh, analytics, DXDM um, 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 email, DXDM mobile, um, DXDM what else? What else am I missing on the on the channels that we use? Maybe that's it. Uh, I think you've got it. Social. That's it. Yeah, we that's it. Exactly. We use, we use search. Uh, we use social. That's it. Yeah. 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 So that that's so that. The DX mobile that we're saying optimize optimize e work experience. So which is that we shouldn't have a program called mobility. This should actually go under the Digital marketing. No, 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 no. So you have mobility, um, which looks at the technology side of things and also looks at the user experience side of things. So, for example, mobility would look at the iPhone and Android app for eWork experience, the iPhone and Android app for iMentor, the iPhone and Android app for um, for Bank My Pal. Anything that anything where we are integrating uh, into the customer's lifestyle using a mobile first strategy falls under mobility. Okay. Integrating into the customer's lifestyle using a mobile first strategy. Okay, so that covers anything that says. So what we have is DX Mobile optimized e work experience sites for mobile, create e work experience mobile app in phase two. Mm -hmm. Then I am app, I don't believe it's currently relevant. It is, it's very it's relevant. relevant. We did have I am app, but uh, it's very relevant. Creating a Telegram instant messaging app, really? Yeah. So I, I don't know that it's Telegram. I would agree with creating instant Yeah, instant messaging, messaging app. app. Yeah, not Telegram. Because we don't know. I may use HipChat. I may use HipChat. I may use Telegram. I mean, actually, yeah. you know, we don't know which one is going to be yet. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many out there. So we just need to, this is where we just need to assess what the best option is for us and for the business. So it won't be Telegram messaging app, it will be instant messaging app for DBT. Because one thing that everyone keeps complaining about is that, um, um, what do you call it, um, Basecamp, in terms of um, collaboration, uh, look, don't, um, I think web is fantastic. Basecamp's ability is amazing on web, but mobile is a disaster. And I think it is, it is very, very, very wrong for us yeah. to stick with an experience that is not seamless. When the customer is, um, is, is mobile yeah. savvy, it is, it is it's a commercial disaster, you know. So you cannot, we, we have to find a way to integrate an instant messaging app into, the app, into, 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 into what we're doing, you know. So, yeah. Mobility, uh, so I am app, I mentor. Then under the board, because what we what effectively we're actually trying to work with Telegram at the beginning, but we know that the use of Telegram might change in the near future. Mm -hmm. So what I asked them to do was to prioritize um, customer service optimization using Zendesk mm -hmm. and all the other platforms available to us first, and mm -hmm. then. The IM integration with the bots would be the last thing. Yeah, so you exactly. You still have social, you still have the Zendesk, you have Salesforce. So being able to um, prioritize, basically sort out our customer service. That's what using the bot technology. Yeah. So across so, so, all platforms. So they will have to now face, create releases based on which platform they are working on at the yes, moment. Yes, yes. Yes, it's, you know, you know. Um, the truth of the matter is that Zendex, you, I mean, you, you have to have decided if you're going to use Zendex or if you're going to use Salesforce's own ticketing system. Sure. All right? So if you don't use... I want to use Salesforce if I'm honest with you. Okay, I, look, as long as there's a justification for it and it adds more value, I, I couldn't care less. But the, the issue here is this. Um, fine, we need to use Zendex. Uh, so, um, um, but the thing about it is that all the information we're collecting from Zendex actually forms the FAQ and actually form the bots as well. So this is because we're going to use that information 
to actually create the bot. Because it's artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence needs to learn. And the only way you can learn is by having a massive log of all the support issues we've had and look at the consistency in all of them. And also make they sure it's relevant. quite a lot of work on sort of, of questions and sort of scenarios that they, they would uh, cater to, mm -hmm. you know, on this sheet. It's just, um, um, so they basically took, so if they, they get created the scenarios, for example, so on a login scenario, somebody coming to find out how they can log in. The key question triggers an answer. Mm -hmm. So you see the answers. Yeah, but you, you, do know, you, you do know we've Based created... I know. Oh, you, know, you do know we've created the bot, right? You do know that the bot has been created on the Telegram. That, I know about the one on social. No, on Telegram. Oh, okay. And we actually have a Telegram bot. You tested it one time, but you yeah. just turned it off. Mm. Well, it off. Yeah, we turned it off because I wanted them to finalize the questions first, but I haven't heard anything back since. Yeah. All right, let's come back to this. Okay, so that's what this thing is is meant to be doing. So this is what this team is meant to be doing anyways mm -hmm. and dealing with that. Um, so I think that they at the moment a project, not really a program. So I need to take this off. Mm -hmm. But they would be on that platform integration as yeah. well. Okay. See, because of confusion with um, what is integrated into what, I have created platform integration program for anything that integrates into the eWork experience platform. Which is good. An eCRM program for anything that integrates into the CRM. So that people understand where the connection is happening. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So I just because someone has come here and changed this. Yeah, just remove you know, access. Oh, you know. SMS still source of. Can you remove access from yeah? anyone that doesn't have any knowledge of what's going on? And just have the key people who know what's going on, so people stop messing around with it. Changed it was ECRM before, but I think two sponsors meetings ago, um, Katie said everything that is integration will come under platform integration. No, but platform is the platform we're talking about is eWork Experience platform. Yes, that's what I that's what we knew it as. But Katie, um, he, um, uh, I actually asked him the question because he puts put them under platform integration. You okay, know. maybe there was some sort of miscommunication there then because um, there's a distinction, there's a very clear distinction and it's very important to um, stick with that, with that. Yeah, because we will be integrating the, the CRM itself into eWork experience as well. So that falls under platform integration. But anything that's going into the CRM is under eCRM. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh so that's that. Then, um, KG, we move to the cyber security program. Mm -hmm. So, under DSD and here, we've, we've covered those. Mm -hmm. So, we move to cyber security. The GDPR to PCI are going to be separate. Mm -hmm. But what we had discussed was that the knowledge that they need to actually run this project is coming to the people attending GDPR training and PCI. Yeah, training. so they are the people that are going to so manage that project. We know, uh, this is where what this is where Femi comes into yes. play because I did mention to Femi and also Caroline that they need to take a lead in this and I also mentioned that everything that they are learning must be implemented on the Digital Bananas um, 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 platform on, on, on Digital Bananas uh, as a company. So there is no point learning and not applying what you are learning. Yes, hello. Sorry, I'm I'm back in. I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, I have spoken to Wale. Uh, I've spoken to Wale on that, and we've set up a project on that. So the project will kick off, and like I've said to him, the project will have to be based on uh, DBT, not on any other. 
for on DP2. Yeah, so, no, no, no. Uh, make the process that out. Right, so when is that kicking off? <laughs> what is the brief for that? What's the mandate for that? The, okay, that, that will be kicking off this week. You will get to know because we need to work closely with Wadi on the mandate so that whatever we work will not just be from projects management or business analyst perspective because it has to come from his own perspective as well and you know he's been aware yes so, i'm aware um, yeah. because of that we are stressing with that so this week when it's when it's okay this week that's when we can sort that out okay. but we've we we'll set up a project for that already okay but we can't we can't do a mandate without him okay i'm good with that be that. That's, that information is okay for me. Next. Yeah. Next is data center where we have the EUI who are doing our extractions mm -hmm. and, the, and the data center who are actually applying the data analysis to the business. Okay, so this is where this is very important. Now, um, I'll just give you an update um, understanding of what we're doing and where we're going, okay? Um, now, I believe a lot of you uh, who have been on the platform for quite a while would know um, a friend of mine called Jerry, and um, um, you also will be aware that I removed him off the platform at some point. And the reason why I removed him off the platform at some point was because I realized that actually we're getting to a stage where we actually now need to be very, very careful in terms of how we introduce our partners onto our platform and everybody understands the protocol that we have in place. And um, it's gone very well with um, Wally, which is good. Uh, so we need to understand that these people are subject matter experts and that they um, are consulting for DBT and also partners with DBT. And they obviously need to be aware of the kind of contracts that they're signing with us. Now, one of the things that I'm really excited about um, is the fact that um, um, Jerry has been doing some really good work uh, with Barclays in regards to data, which I'm um, quite excited about. And he also presented um, um, a, a pretty impressive proposal uh, in conjunction with Digital Bananas Technology. And um, he, uh, as a result of it, the contract was then approved. So um, what we've now done is we've now come together to come up with, uh, if you go back to the data, um, data center, so we're going to be working very closely on this data center project and uh, this is where we're going to be playing with things like um, Excel uh, in terms of uh, visualizing data in Excel but also visualizing data, working closely with you know how to visualize data in Salesforce Wave Analytics and also in Tableau as well and we're going to have an intensive training session on that because um, um, we, 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 we know, I mean, we've seen the kind of things that they're doing at Barclays, it's unbelievable. And the opportunities he's had and the value he's adding, he's going to bring that on board here as well. And everybody will have the experience and the ability to be able to learn. Uh, the plan is that everyone's data analytics skills uh, becomes, um, goes to expert level and their understanding of Excel goes to expert level. This is why I demanded that we start having Excel training every single week. So the likes of Ludare, the likes of um, Ayo will start the initial Excel training and then once you have learned to advanced level uh, next month, we can now start doing the actual work uh, where we are visualizing data using Excel and then integrating it, um, 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 integrating other tools into our platform where we can now start actually being able to make an informed decision through data. Uh, also, this is where we would have to set up the Hadoop environment um, so that um, um, we can start playing with big data, you know, and uh, collating data from a variety of sources and then being able to interpret that data in uh, using um, tools like Tableau, Salesforce Analytics, and even Excel as well. So this is a big one. It's an extremely big one. And um, I need everybody to be up to speed and I need everybody to finish. Well, those who are doing DG prayer, finish your training quickly. Those who are listening to videos, listen to your video quickly because come next month, um, our focus is very much going to be on data. And this is where you will find that we start to put um, place priority on data center when we look at DX Eagle Eye and D DX data center. The last thing I want is for you to be confused by the time we end up starting this. So you need to kick off and get ready and get up to speed. Uh, which is absolutely critical, okay? Um, um, talk to me about DX governance because I, my, my confidence level actually is very, very low in that respect because that's in the hands of program office. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's operating as a PAU slash standalone team because what they are doing is not something that you can allocate budget timeline and just say go away and do it and bring it back. You know, it's like it's actually something that's alive and we're actually trying to implement it as they go. So that's why they're sitting they're sitting under the standalone slash very teams list. So they're not part of But is it a project program. on its own? Or um, is it just is that for what they have? They are yes. Sorry? Is it a project on its own? So they stand alone the project. That's okay, the stand alone project. Is. Okay. And yes. then DXQA is obviously continuous uh, improvement of the e-work experience platform and quality assurance, yes? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So I have clarity now. I know what's going on. So that's the project. All right. So what are what's our key focus and for the, this week? The UX as well. Yeah, UX as well. So you probably sorry, want to... Sorry, could it, could you know, have, Okay, I've got the UX. UX probably needs to be on that business as usual as well. I would put UX on that business in your usual as well, because that's yes. continuous improvement, isn't it? Okay, good. All right, yes. so that, that's good. So now, what is our focus for the next... What is our focus for this week? What is our focus for the next four weeks? And how are we prioritizing this portfolio based on business value, based on um, our, our business objectives, based on the risk that we are faced with, which we need to mitigate? based on any compliance or any rules that we need to apply by. Okay, um, based on business value, voice is top of the list. All right, why, why? So Let's explain to people. Example, one, one, second, one second, one second, one second. Oh, you know, why? So based on, um, the, so we're saying, based in terms of priority, DX VoIP is top on the priority list. Why? I mean, to be honest with you, the first thing I would say is on top on the priority list is the situation where our business is subject to um, 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 abuse, um, where you told me about an, an issue that we had. Yeah, this is that QA. Okay. That QA, okay. and you know that Anton actually has to allocate time, a couple of hours every day to deal with what is on that. And I'm fine, but we need to also okay. manage his time. So that's always going to be ongoing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that that that's definitely something that it happens whether or not any of these things are going on. This has to happen every single day. Mm -hmm. There has to be some hours allocated to QA. Okay. So let let, let me now do with whatever we accept. We should explain. Yeah. Let let me explain what I mean here. So for example, tomorrow, what's our priority? Let the program office know what is going on in regards to actual in in, in regards to IT. What is IT delivering? <laughs> Does it make sense? And let the program office be able to update us and the entire yeah. project team on whether it is complete or not. And they can do, they can also update their benefit realization plan. They can do, we, we update their risk uh, overall um, 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 risk in relation to uh, the business as a whole. You know, and uh, we, we actually have a program office that's doing something that's alive, that's actually involved. Does it make sense? You know, so let's, so for example, tomorrow, what's yeah. the first and foremost priority for us? Let's go to, go to, um, uh, because obviously DXQA will always take priority um, for the first one to two hours of the day, no matter what. Yes, yeah. we will carry on with business as usual, but DXQA must, so let's go to DXQA, identify what is going to be implemented first tomorrow. And this is why the portfolio... Okay. Um, the portfolio on Jira is absolutely critical. Now, the benefit, the reason why I'm so keen on making sure that we do this is because I know that at least, there are probably about what, 10-15% of companies that are doing this effectively well, while the majority of companies are still trying to find a way to sort it out. Now, if we can make sure that all of our candidates are up to date on this, and they have first-hand expertise in this, they would have an advantage over everybody else. So, yes, it must benefit me as a business, but it must also benefit the candidates as well. So, let's, let's, let's go back to the top. Um, I can, let's just go through it step by step, please. Step by step. From the beginning. From the beginning. Alright. So, I want to see a list of my projects only when I click on project selected on dashboard. Okay, that's a priority for me. Um, it's, not, it's not actually very important, but that's something that is a quick win, so we can get that sorted tomorrow. In the great Salesforce, we go to webinar Salesforce CRM work experience. How did that be done? Alright, 
so can we move it to done? Just confirm it's been done and move it to done so that we don't have things that actually have been done and then all of a sudden it's still is, um, um, it's, it's, it's a false um, representation of what we're supposed to do. Okay, so keep moving now. No, it has. It has touched me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, Alright, so it's okay. been done. Alright, so then let's do that. So you're going too fast for me, I can't see. I, I don't know what was on there before. What was that about? Sorry. Uh, I need to collapse this thing. I can't see myself. Sorry. Let me just minimize this thing right here. Uh huh. Alright, video not working, HTML5 not found, not working. Is that a bug? So that's a particular bug. So hopefully that video has been identified. So just open that up. If we don't know what the video is, we can't do anything about it. So we've got to make sure that people are actually just selecting. When you select it, it opens up on the next screen, yeah. No, 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 no. Scroll, scroll down, scroll down. Wow. So you can actually scroll down. Just scroll, scroll down, scroll down on the actual. No, no, scroll, scroll up. Okay. Scroll up, yeah, scroll up on that. Okay, good. So actually, the videos have been identified. All right, so we can check that. So I'm going to quickly do that tomorrow. That's fine. Um, let's go back to the second one. Um, sorry, once again, I don't know what was above that. Okay. What was above that before? Okay, quality of videos. Oh gosh. We okay, not that's fine. So video not working. Okay, the next one is quality of video selection. All right, that we can drop down. I don't need to do that right away. That we can drop down. Just drop it down. Um. And, uh, we should have just dropped it below where it was, uh, wherever it was. Okay, we have to go back to where you were again. Uh -huh. Alright, video category, add filter by trainer, show trainer, that can drop down as well. Video speaker, just wait, you don't worry, actually stay where you are, just stay where you are. Stay where you are, because we just, we cannot go try and we decide what to move up. Uh -huh. Okay, um, video not playing mobile. So go back to video not playing mobile. It's not, it's just below. Two, 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 other blocks. Video not playing mobile. Uh huh, that's it. Have a look at that. So this list of videos that are not playing because okay. it's not all videos. Scroll up, scroll up on the right side. On the right, on the right, on the right. Now, on the right, keep going. Now, if you don't find any information on it, delete it. That is not a bug. I mean, what, what, it's, it's, what are we supposed to do with it? Where is the actual video that's not working? Alright? Mm. Okay, so delete that straight away. Next time people will put the right thing on there. They need to learn how to write free box properly. So, um, DSIN app project subscription required in order to access. What the heck does that mean? Instant messaging app code. That's to do with, you, you can close that because I think that's resolved, isn't it? Yes, 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 that's very Alright, so that's it. So we need to be realistic. So once again, <laughs> the program office is not paying attention yeah. to this thing. You know? I, I, mm, yeah. I, I, I think you are just now missing out on us, KJ. I think it's best we do capacity planning so that we will all be on the same plan. Okay, maybe you should do that so I won't have to complain. See, what, what we are doing. KG, what we agreed last week was that I mentor is our priority. You said we should leave everything and concentrate on I mentor. No, and I that's didn't, why I didn't actually, 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 I didn't actually say that. To make sure that we prioritize I mentor. I didn't actually say that. Said you priority. did? KG. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, you even gave us 14 days. You gave us 14 days. You sent me a message. Yeah, and I said it's a priority, but still. Now, that's not the point. It, things can change. But you see, if, if we're prioritizing from the QA side of things, I think it's just best for us to have a proper agreement. Because if we're working towards, okay, well, you know, I said now that voice is, is our priority. If voice is our priority, and we are working on identity, Myself and Unima, Unima is on the call. We worked for hours on the document that Unima showed you to, right now. That's the document I wanted to show you. Yeah, and Femi, let, 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 let me say something. Because I have to Femi, Femi, let me say something. That document you guys worked on is pretty impressive. 
yeah, and it gives me clarity, and I know exactly where we're going. What actually is irritating is that the program office calls into a meeting, and they have no agenda, they don't know what they're doing. So it's either a uh, 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 miscommunication on your end to update the program office, or you just have a bunch of things that don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's one of the two. Because why was it in, why was it impossible for them to present that? Why did I have to start complaining? They have to start looking for you left, right, and center. If you're not going to be in the meeting at 8 p.m., why isn't there somebody there to actually present on your behalf? Why do I have to go looking for you? Know, at well, maybe, maybe they were not. Maybe, maybe they didn't know what to say. To yeah, exactly. So, 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 so. Honestly, I'm not trying. Oh, Femi, Femi, I don't know how to sugarcoat things. It's one of two things. It's either miscommunication or sheer incompetency. It, there's no middle. You understand where I'm coming from? Okay, there's no middle. And the truth of the matter is, yeah, how on I, earth I, I, would you I, walk into a sponsor meeting and you have no idea what you're doing, what basic projects that are presenting? And I keep saying it over and over again that we need to stop doing that. If you don't know what you're doing, don't come to the sponsor meeting. Allow the person that knows what they're doing to come to the sponsor meeting so that our time is not being wasted. And also, for the benefit of those that are learning, is this what they're supposed to be learning? Let me, let me just explain something. Look, we're, we're a company that we have, we, we, as a company, we have deliverables. So, obviously, there will be high tension when it looks as if the program office doesn't know what they're doing. Because this is money we are dealing with here. So, does it make sense? It can make or break the company. So, you can't expect me to be all calm about it. But then there's the other side of the company. The other side of the company is making sure that the 271 people on this call are actually listening to the right thing. Now, if these people are calling into calls every single day and getting a bunch of people babysitting who's presenting next and assume that that is the role of a PMO analyst or a program manager and they go out there and say that our job interview, how does that affect our credibility? And how does that get them the success story that they want? So obviously I am high tempered at this point in time. I'm actually angry because I just feel that what program office is supposed to be doing, they're not doing it. Well, don't, don't get me, everything will be sorted. I, I, I understand you and I agree with you, but uh, I, I guess it's just miscommunication. Okay. Uh, it, it won't be like that again because everybody was in the meeting. Here, 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 here is my, here's my take on it. One, one second. Here's my take on it. The next time we have a program office meeting, and I don't see some level of value analysis, I don't see some sort of benefit and realization, I don't have a clear idea of what's going on, I think it is time to replace the team that you have on your program office and find some capable people who are willing to do the job. It's just that simple. So that that way you don't have to tell me story again. Okay. All right, well, you know, can you do me a favor and create, because there was that, that, that issue, we don't know if that actual issue is resolved, so you need to create a, um, a task to actually make sure that people who don't have a career insights email are able to select, um, we want to make sure they can't select a project and be a part of the company without actually signing their contract. Now, here's the thing actually, it may be that Anton is allowing them to select a project, no actually, they're not supposed to be selecting a project unless they're using a valid CI email, and that was specifically written in the specification. So, if that is the case, it's a bug, and we need to sort we need to yeah. that out ASAP. So one thing that you need to do is this. Every single time a particular bug is resolved, program office from, obviously playing from portfolio level, you need to look at the cost benefit, you need to do, do some more cost benefit, not cost benefit, but look at the benefit associated to that to the business. So what does this save us on in terms of cost? This is where you speak to you now. So for example, let's say that we realize that 50 people have been able to create a project and join the company and they've been kind of secretly um, accessing our platform without paying for it. That is 60 times 760 pounds. Now, if you calculate that, let me get my calculator and calculate that, that's actually revenue lost, you know? So you will be able to come back and say that we were able to, uh, based on this actual thing that we've done, so if we do 60 times 760, that is what, 45,600 pounds. 
So you can say that the for 5,600 pounds that we lost as a result of this bomb has now been resolved. So we will no longer be losing for the 5,600 pounds. Now let's say that you are taking us a year to fix it. For example, this is how much we will have lost in revenue. Okay, uh, so the good news, or let's say we didn't identify it in a year, this is how much we would have lost in revenue. But as a result of identifying it, we have um, been able to stop us losing this amount of revenue over the next X amount of um, months. And that is benefit realization as a result of the job that you just filled, uh, that you just resolved. That's program level job. So we're good with that now. That's a blocker right there. No, that's a blocker right there. If that's the one you just... Yeah, that's a blocker right there. Thank you. All right. Uh, you didn't assign, you didn't assign it to Anton, okay, so... Okay. Okay, so good news. Yeah, that's a it. So let's go back to our portfolio now. So we now know what's going to be resolved tomorrow. Okay, we now know what's going to be resolved tomorrow. Now let's talk about what we are looking at this week as a business. Um, so what, what, what are the things that we are going to implement this week? And what will be the potential benefit to us? So that they can sit down with you and start looking into that. This week, okay, so we have said, we just discussed something, all the meetings need to be reflected on calendar. So is that something that should add to QA? Yeah, 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 something you should add to QA, but add it later, add, 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 it, it, add it later okay. on, add it later on. Okay, so that's fine. So let's look at the overall okay, portfolio now. So what are we getting dust done and dusted this, this, this okay. week? And what would, it, what would be the benefits for us as so a business? By So by Wednesday, we should be able to switch over fully to our new latest work system, okay. which means that our advisors will, def will definitely have a more um, robust system to work with. We will be able to see uh, our contacts as they are calling in and obviously add contacts straight to our CRM if they are not already existing. Alright, um, so, 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 so let's look at this. So, you, know, you, know, you, know, you need to relate this to the transformation initiatives. Okay, so when we look at our transformation initiatives, does this make us a lot more okay. customer centric? And if it makes us customer centric, yes. in regards to what? Personalization? <laughs> Is that making sense? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, a personalized that's experience. A better customer experience as well. Yeah. And how do we measure that? That's it. So the quantitative measurement and the qualitative measurement, where it's applicable. So that's important. Once again, back to the program office. Yeah? So that's important, that's very, very important in that respect. So, um, um, and also, the, what does, so you can remember the three areas it covers. It covers the customer experience, process, um, um, process, uh, uh, processes, and then also business model. So, it, 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 so what, what is this actually touching on, and what is it improving for us? Because the digital capability so is void, it's, it's is void integration. Yeah. Also, talk now reporting. You know, like this thing I was trying to do today to work out how many calls our advisors have actually made today. Mm -hmm. um, using the system that they are actually using to make the calls, those calls will be automatically logged on the profile. So I don't need to ask somebody or beg somebody to manually log a call on somebody's profile anymore. Mm -hmm. From Wednesday, it will be done as soon as they receive that call. Okay. Let me quickly. Once they get off the phone, the call is locked. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So the question is, so let, let me just come over here and show you what I've got here. Uh, hopefully that should help. Uh, this is why it's important that you go and read the uh, digital transformation videos that have been created for you guys, because it's the only way you would understand what's going on here on a transformation level. Okay. So if I just quickly come down to this area here. So for example, um, 
program office should be aware of what we obsess about. We obsess about success stories, we obsess about best customer experience at all touch points, we obsess about work experience anywhere, everywhere. These are the, this is what we are obsessed about, and we have to make sure. Oh, sorry, you should be able to see my screen. I don't know why you can't see my screen. I have control, I guess. Okay, no, I don't. We can't, yeah. Somebody is logging in as me, that's the problem. So I made that person the presenter instead. Can you see my screen now? Yes. So we've got to be able to identify what we obsess about. Success stories. Better customer experience at all touch points. Work experience anytime, anywhere. How is this, how is the implementation of this VoIP uh, technology and integration with Salesforce adding value in this area okay so we've got to be able to identify where that is adding value okay then you go to your what success looks like for us we uh, um we want to create digital products and services so good prospective candidates and existing candidates looking to move up the career ladder change careers or secure high paying roles prefer to use them how is this benefiting us for example when people call the office line and then they will realize automatically that we know who they are Maybe they haven't even started the program, but because they registered two months ago, would that create a personalized experience for them? Would that make them one of? Um, would, they, would that make them feel special? You know, so would they prefer to actually use us because they feel that this company knows who I am? That is another area for us. So you can see how digital technology is helping us achieve this objective in terms of. So we're not just having a digital strategy; we're having. Um, um, uh, we're taking advantage of the digital capabilities that enables us to achieve that strategy. Then also, in line with us being digitally transformed for success, can we say that we're now moving towards a centralized customer data center where all of our digital channels are feeding into that data center and that data center feeding into the digital channels? Does that, is that leading to better client retention? Is it leading to better client acquisition? Are we having a better return on investment as a result of it? That's another thing that we have to obviously look at. Um, the culture is the job of the program office to actually make sure that we're obviously in line with this culture. But you got, when, you're looking, when you're looking at um, measuring success, you want to measure success based on overall customer experience, overall operational process, overall business model. So, uh, and this is where the digital capabilities uh, uh, looks into that. So, for example, when it comes to customer experience, customer understanding, and this is based on segmentation, socially informed um, 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 knowledge. How is this technology that we've implemented uh, helped us to achieve this one? Top line growth, customer touch points, uh, in terms of customer service, cost channel coherence, self service. How is this helping us? Operational process. I, I think Oyuna just mentioned it that actually performance improvement in terms of process digitization, which is what we are doing now, process digitization. Um, looking at work enablement, working anywhere, anytime. The fact that through the voice technology, People can actually now, our customer service people can actually pick up the phone from anywhere in the world and actually work, which is pretty impressive as long as they have internet connect connection. Uh, performance management, operational transparency, data driven decision making. Does that help us? Because we might just said it just now that he's able to make a better decision and know who's picked up the call, who hasn't picked up the call because we're able to gather that we're able to track the progress um, using the, um, by integrating voice with CRM. Um, the overall business model as a whole, uh, where does this fall into? You know, so these are the kind of things that we've got to be looking at. The program office needs to be looking at this every single day and saying that, okay, so when it comes to benchmarking our performance, when it comes to um, looking at how well we're doing, doing qualitative and quantitative uh, measurement um, in terms of how well we're doing, these are the areas that we obviously need to focus on. I hope it makes sense. It does. Okay, good. So, um... Um, yeah, so once again, customer experience, looking at customer insights, experience design, customer engagement, uh, people and organization, digital skills, digital worker enablement, digital culture, operations, products and service innovation, connected operations and systems, process automation. So you can see that we're actually doing this. Um, so, and that's, this is why I really encourage everybody to seriously get involved in this because you're doing the work, it's right here. We, you know, it's further broken down here. You can see over here, uh, customer management, sales transformation, service transformation, loyalty management, uh, marketing management, messaging management, social media management, content management. 
uh, commerce management, omni commerce transformation, digital humanized transformation, and omni commerce enablers. These are things that you need to be identifying and saying that, okay, how are we fair enough in line with what, we, uh, what our objectives are? I hope it makes sense. So very, very important that you look at that. Um, one thing that will help as well is um, this area. I think it's in another presentation. It's on this one. Uh, where, okay, actually it's here. So, for example, the value tree of digital business. So, the value levers. So, growth through digitization, which is what we are doing. We are growing through digitization. So, you can actually say that as a result of platform integration, uh, which we've carried out over uh, platform integration, integrating um, other platforms, in, oh, sorry, integrating a number of platforms into the eWork experience platform, has actually led to growth through digitization. So what does that mean to us? For example, um, we can see the objective new customers. We have been able to generate more customers online while we see a decline in of um, in classroom customers. Okay, um, um, new of new and optimized products and services. So what is the new and optimized products and services? That's the eWork Experience platform. New optimized channels. So what are the channels that we're now using to generate more business? Facebook, um, YouTube. So um, 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 so so before. There was no way people can find out about what we do as a business and what we do day to day. Now we can actually stream that live for people to actually see. Uh, new pricing and early models. So do, are, we, are we now able to now have new pricing models? So for example, you know, remember what you said about actually we shouldn't be giving everybody um, access to all of the platforms because now we can have new pricing models uh, being introduced into it. So we have the premium service and then we have the subscription service and stuff like that, which is something that can be taken on. So process efficiency, how um, digitized and automated process um, process uh, processes, improve process governance and efficiency through real time insights. And that's where sales um, for uh, sales source wave analysis comes into play. Access utilization, how well are we uh, uh, utilizing the access we already have in, in house? Agility, the rate at which we're able to roll things out uh, and be flexible and adaptable to be able to respond to change. Um, new cost model. Um, um, looking at ways um, of, in, of dramatically dr um, driving down costs and improving overall um, uh, throughput. So these are the things that you're looking at. When you look at the investment in digital capabilities. So if you look at new customers, for example, analytics and dynamic customer segmentation, improved digital customer experience, link to segments, faster time to market with target offering. So how, when you now look at our objective in regards to the voice, how has that, how have we actually been able, uh, through which of these have we invested in that has led us to generate new customers? I hope it makes sense, you know? So those are the kind of things that you've got to be looking at, you know? So you're looking at your value levers in terms of growth through digitization, um, value of digital business to us, and efficiency through digitization, cost optimization. Those are the key areas for us. And then when you look at the objectives, you can see the key things that we're looking at. When you look at investment in new digital capabilities, You've got to identify, okay, which one of these areas are we investing in to achieve this? And then you've got to look at your metrics. So when you're looking at your performance measurement, when you're looking at your quantitative or qualitative, program office needs to be able to ask for you now. Customer acquisition and churn rate, what is it? Sales conversion, what is it? Customer profitability, what is it? In line with new customers. When we look at new optimized products and services, we're looking at cross-sell and off-sell. Cross How are we able to cross-sell and off-sell? Have we seen an uptick or have we seen it reduce? Um, decrease time to market, revenue per customer, product development. Do you actually know what the cost, what the customer, uh, so we're we actually right now, what's our customer acquisition? What's the cost, cost, cost of customer acquisition? How much does it cost to generate the customer? How much does it cost to generate the customer before? And how much does it cost to generate the customer now? Then, what's the lifetime value of a customer? Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to find out what the lifetime value of the customer is. Because when you're not playing around with these metrics, which you're going to be using to report to me on a weekly, um, on a weekly or um, 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 bi-weekly or monthly basis, we need to see these things. Because these are the digital metrics that enables us to know if we're actually, if what we're doing is working. You know, because sometimes some things don't happen straight away. It takes time for us to see results. And this will help us to be able to know that we're doing the right thing or we're going downhill or making the biggest mistake or growing too fast. Because that's another mistake we don't want to make. We don't want to grow too fast that we cannot support our growth and we fail. That's another thing as well. Okay? So, um... 
leaders should recognize specific challenges which should be addressed. So the, what, the, you've got to be aware of the challenges, revenue-wise challenges, brand and IP and intangible um, and intangibles um, operations. Those got to be aware of the of, of the um, challenges, aware of the digital value uh, leaders, and also your um, target KPI. Yes. 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 Sorry, at the top there where it says swap, swap displays, can you swap display? Because what we are seeing, the, the presentation mode that we are seeing doesn't give us the full slide. Just at the top there where it says swap display. Okay, okay, I see that. How does that work now? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. But look, if you're part of the digital transformation program, you should be able to see all this anyway. Okay? These are very, very important things um, which you can take advantage of. But I haven't got time to start training you through this all over again because I've already done that before. Okay? But uh, we'll come back to that at some point. Okay? Alright, so now that we have sorted that out, um, um, oh, you know what? So, so you just go back to... So VoIP is one thing that we need to implement. We're happy with that. What else, please? In terms of implementation this week. Just let me have a... Oh, this thing has messed up now. Okay. I'm good now. What does that mean? On Salesforce, you now have to be able to see a, an object called candidate. So you convert from a lead to become a candidate. Um, and that way, it, you have more meaningful reports, more meaningful data that you can work with. So that part is, get, is getting uh, done today. Um, I'm still looking for people who can work with me on data cleansing. I don't think we can do that in-house because for people to sit down on them, uh, Salesforce and start converting leads who are supposed to be candidates. That's that's going to take a while. Yeah, <coughs> but why can't we um and why can't we do out? that in the pipeline? Yeah, but can't we find a tool that can help us to do that automatically? No. Um you somebody needs to look into that data and clean it up because we we cannot afford to make mistakes. There is no common denominator amongst all of those records. Yeah, but oh you know, oh you know, oh you, you know, a lot of them. Oh you know, you have to find them. Yeah, seventy-five thousand naira. Temporary work, ten people, seven fifty k. We have a massive office that can take hundred people. Why waste the space? All the people that are coming for sponsorship in Nigeria, um, why can't they do the job? I mean, you, you, we, uh, we have actually six people already that I'm aware of that signed and up. I have to be careful. I have, I have to be very careful. Don't, don't forget that our data is basically our money. I cannot, I cannot just give it to anybody. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm going to say is that train people. So I, ha I am building a pool of. Okay. So, sorry, KJ, if I can come in for you now. Yeah. Um, how about the project team? No, no, no. Data, data cleaning, the physical cleaning of the data, they will not do. They will manage the process, they will determine what the parameters are, they will document the process, they will not touch the data. Alright? The data will be touched by people I have my eyes on here with me. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, that why don't you hire um, a team of people that you can train? Train them for two weeks and get them to do your job for a month to two months in Nigeria. You have a pool of resource. So, you know, I'm that's what, that is what I'm saying. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, you just need to identify what that budget but is. I, sorry, and we're looking the budget. I, I, sorry, I disagree a bit with this. Because we have a team for it. No, no, no. Femi, you don't understand. Femi, that we cannot expose our data. We can't expose our data. data. <laughs> they over, what, 30,000 people on the system? Femi, do you know? Do you know? Do you know how many people have tried to exploit this platform in the last six months? Let's not even go far. And that's people that are internal within the company. You, know how many you now want us to give the data to everybody in the company. Exactly. Are you having a laugh? I beg, please, do you not go and hire the proper staff that can do the job, please? I don't. Uh, I, I get what you mean. That, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so, 
So the project team will do all the planning and obviously supervise the work. We will have reports that are not give them visibility of what the progress is. But the physical work will be done by people who don't know what Kayenta is. They just know that they are in front of this spreadsheet and that they give it very clear. Yeah, let, let me even explain. Let me even explain this. Let me, let me explain to Femi. Femi, do you actually know that one of our competitors have actually contacted Wale to ask him to come and do cyber security? Mainly because that competitor literally pays to be on our platform. We don't know who the heck he is, but he just wants to keep knowing what we're doing so that he can always be on top of this game. <laughs> we now decide, and they, for all we know, you remember what, when we were infiltrated last time? Those people walked all the way up to program office where I was trusting them directly with my strategies. Now, there's what we, well, there's what we expose publicly, you know, and I, I, and I also assess the risk of what I'm exposing publicly, but there's some stuff I don't talk about. So, for example, the, the data, oh, hell no. What if we end up, well, if one of the first people on that, what do you call it, is one of, is, 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 is one of the uh, modes that have been planted, and all of a sudden, all of our data, they are just copying and pasting it and sending it out. So it's very, very sensitive. I agree with you. That's that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're okay with VoIP. What else are we working on? Okay, so I uh, said some of this is going to happen this week as well. So you'll be able to see that difference on Salesforce, which means that from uh, next week, can it, um, staff should now be converted. Once they, once they have somebody who has made a deposit payment, that qualifies that person to be called a candidate on Salesforce, we convert to candidate on Salesforce. And okay. then we have more meaningful reporting uh, even there. Then with regards to ESP, ESP gave me some research on providers that they found, but they also found, they, they tried to do like an analysis of the sentiments mm -hmm. of uh, people who may have tried to patronize those guys, mm -hmm. and it wasn't good. So I sent them back again for okay. a fresh hunt, okay. finding new providers. So okay. nothing happening there. Um, Basecamp integration, we are integrating Basecamp 2 so that people can automatically just add themselves to everything on this account. Now, is that on Jira? Because that will be on business as usual, won't it? That will fall into QA. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to put that on there. Okay, so is that going to be done this week? Yes, that's going to be done this week. All right, next. Uh, this is just a couple of hours job, so it's... Um, I met Paul. I don't know what you said about it now. I thought you had put that on the. You had actually started on that today, really. On that. Yeah, so I'll update you. Let, let me update you. Yeah, let me update you on iMentor, which is important. Uh, so, once again, um, if you guys can understand what's going on here, this is something that. So, basically, what the program office should have been doing is what you know and I are now doing with you guys. Sorry, guys, I need to charge my um, um, computer. It seems that um, the battery is dying, so I need to make sure that I charge it before it actually dies for good. So, um, if you don't mind, um, and I can show you what we've done. Okay, if nobody can present today, the program office fault, not mine. All right, so let's come over here and have a look at what we've done today. So, um, one of the things I wanted to do today was to demonstrate how difficult it is to actually start gathering requirements without a justifiable business case. Uh, and we started working on the catalog and we realized that actually it was a bit of a nightmare and everyone started working on this. So um, the requirement catalog has actually, for the iMentor, we've started on already. Um, so we really need the people working on the business case to scurry up and help us so that we can actually know exactly where we are. But if I move over to, um, if I move over to Confluence, I actually ended up creating a space on Confluence, okay? 
And for the space I created of Confluence, uh, we created the use case diagram, which was really, really good. So at least with the use case diagram, we were able to get an idea of what's going on. And then from there, we went ahead and created the epic stories. Um, um, so you guys can actually start carrying on from here. So whoever's working on this project doesn't need to go and create something else. They can actually work from here. So if you look over here, you do need to make sure your product requirement is filled out uh, and updated with your requirement catalog. Uh, so I just come over here so you can actually see what you need to do, which you're not aware of yet. Okay. So um, try and catch up, please. It's very, very important. So I meant I meant the requirement certification. <coughs> Just show that to you very quickly. So you look at it, you need to put your target release and all this information there. Um, you need to put your requirements. Um, you need to put your, um, actually what's going on here? Um, so basically they need to move the requirements from that spreadsheet into this document. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, but there was a lot more stuff here. I just don't know why, where it's gone. But um, that said, if you come over here, you have the use case diagram I worked on. So I've actually gone ahead and done a few things. Um, now, it's important for you to understand what we're trying to achieve here. This is in three phases. There's the web and mobile version, then there's the app version, iOS and Android. The app version is long term, it's not, it's not immediate. So right now you need to focus just on the web and mobile. And you can see that we've actually created the use case diagram, played around with it. It tends to work in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, you now need to flesh out what needs to be done. Uh, there's the ability to log in via LinkedIn so that we can populate the mentor's information with um, stuff that's already on LinkedIn, uh, provided it's up to date, then they update that. Um, there's the ability to, um, there's tracking the mentor, there's extracting the uh, four week trial, sorry, four week free mentoring. Now, what's really funny is somebody sent me a message today saying that, oh, it's not fair that they should not, um, that only the new candidates should be, um, should, um, be assigned to the new model for the iMentor. Look, you were there when we were gathering requirements. Why didn't you talk? You know, that, that really irritates me. You know, we, everybody is allowed to get involved. So once, we, 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 and people do this all the time, you're, you're allowed to get involved from day one. When you're not involved, you will not hear something is going on, you will not come and say that you don't agree with it. Well, that's your problem. You know, so if you have a say, please say it now while we're gathering the requirements. Because once this is implemented, it would replace the old method so if you're not happy with something you are part of the requirement gathering uh, then join the requirement gathering team okay join the people who are engineering the requirements and build it because we're building it for you and we're building it based on the complaints that people have and we're trying to improve it and the truth of the matter is that if it's what everybody wants if you don't have your say and you're not involved in the requirement gathering part of it and the um, fleshing out of the requirements and they go ahead and implement it, then you have, really don't have a say once it's been implemented. So it's important that you are part of this project. Remember, we are building it for you. So it is what majority wants that we are going to do. So please make sure that you make your voice heard. So that's where we are. And you guys just need to catch up and I will keep updating this all the way through. So um, I would actually have preferred for the actual team who are involved in this to join me so we can work together on it. Um, you do need to do as is to be, especially when, when you're writing your business case. So you need to write, you need to create the existing model and then create the proposed model. Then look at the drawbacks and benefits of the existing model. Look at the drawbacks and benefits of the proposed model. You know, do some level of options analysis, cost benefit analysis, and then make your recommendation. That is what you're going to need to do to create that business case. Okay, so um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and you guys could kick off. I am very much involved in all projects now. So you can easily call me and as long as I am part, as long as I'm taking a lead in something, you can actually get my attention and you can actually get me to your meetings. If I'm not taking a lead in something, you will never be able to get me. So this is a time to grab me if you need my help. Okay, um, so that hopefully explains that area and there's a clear understanding in regards to what needs to be done. Uh, there, so that's where we are with iMentor. Okay. Okay, so we could, no, what we are need to understand is what exactly what part of iMentor will now be worked on this week, what they will be delivering this week. So I guess it's basically the completion of all of these documents and the full list of. Um, yeah, I think I think um, the business case needs to be These are stories that will go on the backlog. Yeah, actually, let me show you that as well. So. Um, we've actually done some of that as well. So if I can go to Jira DX I Mentor, um, I'm hoping that as you guys are creating spaces, you're making sure they're linked, just like I did this. That this one is linked. I can go straight from um, Confluence 
to G rap. You know, and I can so everything is hey, what's gonna happen? Mm. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, we've not started anything yet. So I can go straight from conference. <laughs> I was afraid. So I can go, I can go straight from conference to Jira. So you can actually see all of my epics here. Okay, so I've created the epics. So you might want to create some more epics, mm. and I've created the user stories, and we have two issues in the backlog. So we need to we need to start doing work properly. You know, because like I said to you before, if you don't do it properly mm. here, you will not be able to do it properly there. You know, so this is why, and remember why you are here. Um, truth of the matter is that there's always going to be a bunch of people who somebody paid for them to come here and they don't really want to do it. And you don't want to be copying those people because some of you, you borrowed money to pick to come here. Some of you actually, um, um, that was your last change to come here. So you cannot allow a bunch of lazy ass people to demotivate you. You've got to focus on your own learning, get what you need to learn, um, and get your success story. Later they will wake up, but don't don't kind of wait for them, you know. So that would be my recommendation in, in, in this in this in this um in regards to this. But we're moving forward and people are participating, so we need to kick off. I hope it makes sense. All good, all good, all good. So um so for the week, what else do we have? Um Eagle Eye have been asking me when Anton will have time to work on habit implementation. I'm going to be that great time for that. That's probably so down, that's down the list. That's down the list. That's down the list. That's definitely down the road. Yeah, that's definitely down the road. Okay. That's definitely down the road. Okay. Um, okay, looking on... Looking Control has gone back to you. Uh, once you're done, I will update on First Bank. So, um, pro, um, can I can I confirm that uh, it looks as if um, Program Office will have to get their act together and get their list of projects that are presenting next week instead. Okay, and hopefully next week, the, um, uh, next sorry, this Thursday. So hopefully this Thursday. No, next week is Thursday. Yeah, yeah, I know. So what I'm saying this Thursday, Program Office will at least be able to present to us properly, and then the projects can actually present. We won't have to do this job. Okay. One thing, one thing I want to announce to everyone, please. Yes, I will. Well, well, KG, program office is working. This thing that you are saying, we're working it together with Uyino. Okay, I've heard. We're putting, it's not that we're not working. So, if you say that we should, program office should put their minds together, it would appear as though we are not working. Okay. And we're working tirelessly on this. Oh, this is fine. Is nice. What you're asking us to we can't do it alone without the product manager, who is Oyinua. Because she's the one that will tell us, you, we need you, we need Oyinua. If I do prioritization for you, and I bring it to you, and it's not what you have in mind, then everything we've done is nothing. No, actually, because... It's okay, okay. for me. I mean, we did identify some next steps. We did identify yeah. some next steps. What okay. would be fair on the people? It would appear as though they are not working. Okay. And actually, they are working. You know that. All right. So, so I will just make something very clear. I think we all do. No, no, one second, please. I'll make something very clear. I actually do not appreciate hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many people had work hard and don't deliver anything. What I appreciate is smart working. What I appreciate is results. That's all I care about. In any business that you will go to, all that matters is results. You can tell me how hard you're working, but if there's nothing to deliver, then you are not working. Results is what counts. All right, I read you. We 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 we'll work on this and we we'll keep working on it as a team. Uh, Tommy, I guess since we we. I've been able to show a KG the portfolio and he's happy with it. I think do you think it's appropriate to let the teams know uh, that alongside obviously completing their chapters and completing their um, um, briefs, they need to start working on the, the high level work breakdown, um, which is basically yeah. their, their epic uh, their user story, their requirements. Is because what KG, the portfolio for Jira software, that the extension to Jira that would help make all of this work. I think I sent you the video. Did you, did you have a And I bought it. I bought it. Ask me. I bought it. I paid for it already. 
the, the, oh, the, you have? The, yes, the day oh, of this, this. I actually was going to go on free trial. Oh, oh, you know, they should have updated you. Oh, right. They should have updated okay. you. Okay, I, I thought we were going to start with the free trial and then pay for it. So what I wanted was, let the teams have the user stories. Because from the way it works, you have to set up your team. And those teams have to have their epic, their user stories, their releases and everything planned. Um, for the portfolio view to work, otherwise you, you can't see anything on portfolio view. So that's one of the things that Femi and I agreed we were going to tell uh, the teams. And another thing was also training on portfolio for Jira as well. Um, everyone, we were, we were thinking to plan a training session in for that sometime this week as well, so that people know what's happening on there and they, when they don't go on there looking confused, you know. Um, tell me, you were just trying to say something to me. Yeah, no, that's all right. Please just go on. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, so this is where um, it becomes crucial to decide what those deliverables are for uh, the requirements phase. So, on Jira, there's a template. I think it works perfectly fine. We know that um, Jira works with Epic. Jira works with user stories. Okay. So we're going to. We're going to work with that. So every team needs to have their, their high level list at least ready this week of what the epic and user stories are going to be delivering. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when Femi has hold of that or anyone in the program of that, he can use those on Jira right. and okay. we can now have a portfolio view. Okay? So that, that's our aim. We want you to start using a portfolio for Jira for what it's meant for. However, we cannot do it without the teams having this information. Um, releases, so for the mobility um, projects, which probably have phases, like for example, the ETS mobile that first will start with improving um, the e-work experience, mobile experience, then move on to developing the mobile app. You have to plan your releases. So you can plan as long term as possible, but planning what you're delivering in what space of time. Um, per release. So all of that information is needed to populate into a uh, portfolio for Jira to make it work. But Femi will obviously, and the team will definitely communicate further to you guys uh, in your individual spaces of data. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, um, do I have control, you know? Uh, so I think I have control. Okay, so I need to take control now. Uh, okay, so you know, and here's the good news. Uh, you'll probably be very happy about this. Uh, First Bank um, online web portal is going live uh, within a few um, within a few days, probably maximum. I think in this occasion, two weeks. Okay, so um, what we're going through right now is. I know, I know. This time around, I'm very confident. Trust me, this time around, I'm very confident because we've um, almost passed all the security tests we've been going through. Um, one thing that I now need is okay. for us to now have a team who um, are going to do full QA on the, um, on the website. I'm going to make the security requirements available. Um, once again, this has to be a very sensitive team uh, because obviously it's for a bank. Um, we need this team set up by tomorrow. So Femi, if you can please uh, help me with this. I think Femi, you're working on the first bank project so it will be very important for you to take lead on this now a lot of you don't understand the importance of this project and i'll explain this to you um first bank is the biggest uh, in terms of asset is the biggest bank in west africa in terms of asset um i don't know about uh, the whole of africa but in terms of west sub saharan africa is the biggest bank and also probably the oldest bank um they have a base in the united kingdom in france so they have a number of subsidiaries all over and um, they, uh, we uh, are very proud to have been commissioned with their digital marketing. Um, uh, uh, sorry, we were commissioned. Um, so, you know, I remind you because it was such a massive project, I can't remember again what we were doing there. All I know is that we had a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, digital um, optimization for portfolio or program where we had about eight projects. So we had email marketing, optimization, social media strategy, content strategy, uh, SEO, 
um, mobile, so we first have to reverse the mobile, the old mobile site before we now did this whole web reverse. So that's seven in total. I mean, I think we have analytics optimization as well. Um, that didn't even include the, the gamification apps that we did on the site and all the other stuff, uh, social media reporting uh, work that we did as well. But I'm telling you, this web revamp, I've never seen a project extend this much. I mean, so much learning has come out of this. It's okay. incredible. Now, what's really cool about this, uh, something that's very, very important, is um, I'll give you I'll, I know you guys are aware. For example, this was one of the projects that Jerry, when he went obviously um, to Barclays and won the contract that he won, this was um, one of the projects that he presented. And uh, we're very proud of Jerry. And I, and I keep telling Jerry, I said, Jerry, um, we had he had a lot of issues in the early stages. And I said, don't, you know what, Jerry? Don't worry about it. Trust me. Just the fact that you are responsible for the SEO of this company uh, already creates a high profile for you and he, when the time came he realized it and he can right now he's so excited and i'm excited for him and there's so much we can do now it's unbelievable now one of the things i really want is that everybody is involved in the security testing everybody is involved in the usability testing and the overall functional and um non-functional testing of the first bank website now we are doing that we've been doing that over and over again um the reason why i didn't get you involved earlier was because it was too sensitive for me to do that now that we finished the job uh we will do it again and we'll shoot we'll be we'll allow you to be able to actually go through it so that way we can have uh, a lot of people actually getting involved in the whole process but being able to put this on your cv is going to go a long way um this project has not even ended because this is this is the global site we now have to work on make, replacing the template um, um, for all of their subsidiaries as well, which is a lot of work, you know. And um, I'm really excited about it, and I want you to be excited about it as well. But we need to allocate a team who are going to be doing that. Now, for the benefits of, for the benefit, of what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn the screen around over here because obviously people um, externally cannot see the news website. So I'll just turn the. But I will let you guys see the new website that we've done that you're going to be testing, okay? So, um... You can see my screen, right? And you will see that there's a massive difference. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ah! Every single time. <laughs> You know, Anton doesn't tell me when he changes the, the stuff. Done it he just does whatever he wants, whatever he wants. And I guarantee you the thing may not even work. And then if I not call him in the middle of the night right now, he'll be screaming. Changed it. Um, He's changed it. So we can't see. Um, I can't see Jack. What it looks like now. Yeah, I can't see. Uh, no, we'll have another session, and then I'll show it to you because obviously I can't see it right now. So let me try again and see what happens. Hopefully it will work now. No, it's not working. It's not working. All right, Shane. I have to deal with Shane. So sorry, guys. You can't have access, can you? Huh? Sorry? What did you say? It can now. I was the project saying. manager on this, would he have access? No, 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 he won't, he won't. We've gone far from that, he won't have access to this. We've gone very far from that. Okay. Well, I don't have access, how do we have access? <laughs> I think I may have access to another browser. I may have access to another browser. It's loading, so maybe we'll come up now. Let me let me enable the screen. I mean, it's loading, but I don't see anything happening. Okay. Now, there are two things I need you guys to do. Okay. The first thing I need you to do, uh, which is very very important, is obviously the 
uh, overall um, functionality and uh, user experience and non-functional testing. That's the first that we need to do. The second thing we need to do is a case study. We need to create a case study on how the application works. Uh, so let me, I mean, I'm just going to... Um, but what we need to do, the second thing we need to do is create a case study. Okay. Um, oh, thank God the password doesn't work anyway. <laughs> so the first, the first thing we need to do is create a case study. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is create a case study. Now, um, that's the first thing we need to do. So the case study will look at the current site and we will look at the um, proposed new site. And we will look at the benefits of adaptive responsive uh, user experience compared to the old sites that they had. And we would have to actually, I think you guys started working on that. I don't know if you've actually finished that. But that is one major thing. So that's a project you need. That's a client um, side project that needs to kick off straight away. So the first thing is your case study. The second thing is the functionality and non-functional testing, which will include your user experience, your security testing, your performance testing, uh, speed tests, and all that stuff. Then the third thing we need to do is the user manual because it's a pretty big application. Um, and because it's a pretty big, a pretty big, a big application, we need to create a manual for it. The certain plugins that we built from scratch, the certain plugins that we bought and reconfigured. So we need to identify all the plugins and create a manual for all of this. You know, so and that involves a lot of work. And I keep saying it, anyone that is a part of this. Oh my God, I just, look, the, the, the way you would go. And then, then what we can now do is make the requirement specification available to you. So you can actually see the requirement specification because you, you need to use that to create your case study. You need to use that to create your, um, your, your, your test cases and test plans, your, your test plan and test cases. And you will also need to use that to create your, um, what's the last thing I mentioned? Three things, case study, the overall quality assurance in terms of your functional and functional and the manual okay so the user manual. guide user guide so that, that like you will need all of that so that to be quite honest with you is what you is it, it's like the work has been done but you can now learn about how it was done and document it in terms of creating a case study document it in terms of creating a user guide and test it look if there was any if in terms of being a digital project manager or being a digital BA, working on a bank's um, 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 real estate, that's their online web portal, across the globe, no, no other better pro there's no other better project than that, ever. You know, so I think that is a very important thing. And funny enough, we need to get this done within a maximum two to three weeks before they go live. So, Femi, is this possible or is it impossible? Do you have a team you can trust already? It's very possible. Do you have a team you can trust already? Yes, I have, uh, yeah, I have a team. We'll, mm -hmm. uh, we'll just put them together. Okay, good. All right. So if we can do that, then everything would um, fall into place and we'll be very, very happy with that. Um, I, I honestly believe that it's an extremely, it's very important. You know, now, um, what are you going to do once you've worked on this project? Now, remember on your CV, so we still need to have, I mean, what date have you booked for my CV writing uh, days and my interview Q&A days? Because I don't know if you've booked that in. We, we, we were hoping that you could do that on Thursday before we do our JIRA uh, training. But since it's Monday and Thursday that you've given us, um, we just thought that so that we could have other people for... Yeah, but we need to sort that out ASAP because people are eating for the CV sessions. For example, the next CV session yeah, I would like to... If you can do that on Thursday, it should be good. No, Thursday is sponsor meeting. We're not okay. changing that. Thursday, Monday, Thursday is sponsor meeting. Okay, the challenge, okay, make it that. Okay, we'll, we'll work it out because you see the team, teams are also meeting in the evenings and now they only have two or three days left in the week, which is okay, but we also have trainings in those days. Okay. For example, that Thursday now, 
to my not be able to do Jira training. We would need to move it. So, you know, maybe the Jira training would have to be Wednesday. Who sponsors me? No worries. Yeah. So, let's cut it out with scheduling. Let's, let's take that uh, offline. Let's just make it look of all the parts you do. We'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay. So, that said, um, the, uh, the reason why I need to have my CV session is this. What I would like to do, actually, is now teach you how to list the projects you worked on and your roles and responsibilities under that project. For, as a PMO analyst, for example, you are expected to work on multiple projects. As a project manager, being able to work on multiple projects kind of qualifies you to be a program manager. Does it make sense? So you could actually start applying for PMs to pro 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 project managers to program manager roles. Then, obviously, as a BA, your ability to talk about what you did on each project is absolutely critical. So, for example, you can put First Bank there, all your tasks, what you did. Put um, ECRM, uh, DX ECRM, what you did. You know, <laughs> there's a one that, like, the, the, the reason is because most people don't do their CVs like that. So, when you do your CV in such a way whereby it demonstrates your depth of experience and understanding of portfolio management, it just, it's just on a, a whole different level entirely. So, that's why I want us... I want you to be doing it and then I want to show you how you should sell yourself. Okay, so um, program office, if we don't have that CV session this week, then once again, it's your fault. <laughs> program office. We would have a program office is in trouble. Truth of the matter is that, truth of the matter is if, if all the candidates turn against you, then you have no choice than to actually do the work, you know, and deliver. That's that's I mean that's what Donald Trump did, isn't it? You know, as much as as much as we don't we may not like that guy, that guy is a, that guy is good he's, he's, he's an amazing strategist. You know, he can say whatever he wants to the press, you know, and when the when the press seems to be getting an upper hand, he just goes back to his base and gets his base to turn on the press. Then the press gets afraid. Then they stop saying what they are saying. So me too I've learned from Donald Trump and I've decided to implement the same strategy. So like right now, I can see Temi Tokwe. Look at Temi Tokwe. She say no. She won't. She won't said massive disappointment for members of ECRM. Probably because they wanted to present that they can't present. Whose fault is it? Definitely not my fault. Program office fault. Turn against them. Eh? So now that way. <laughs> Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? <laughs> It's true, it's true. I think people have hated me for too long. It's time they start hating you. <laughs> so they should start to hate me. Exactly. Exactly. It's easy because let's think about it. The amount of hatred. I can't sleep well at night. I wake up sweating. You know, because how much people hate me. So let the hatred come to you small. <laughs> Let them see me as the savior right now. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've had our heated session. Um, once again, it's a learning curve for everybody. There's nothing for anybody to take personal, um, but the opportunity to learn. And hopefully, um, all this is for our own good anyway. We're all learning from it. And it's, it's to make the company better, make ourselves better, and go out there and kind of crush everyone else out there <laughs> and be leaders in our field. So um, I'm glad, I'm pleased, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to next Thursday. Any other AOB? Thanks, Tiki. We, we want to show some things to the project team mm -hmm. yeah, when you have told us, but you know what? You still have a few minutes. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so right. I'm Please, okay. I, I want us to clarify some of the things with yeah. Yes, KG. Thank so, you for I can go, yeah? Thank you so much. All right, then. Thanks for All right, I'll leave your call now. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. See you later. I'm leaving the webinar. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank God. I left before she called me. All right, job done. Okay. Let's see how many people have survived the call. Now, <laughs> over to you guys. So, um, um, I guarantee that most people probably didn't stay to the end. Uh, this is business as usual for us. Uh, this is us gaining practical work experience and doing the job. And as you can see, for the, probably for the first time, 
you can see that it's a real deal. It's not make believe project. We're not making things up. We're not saying that oh, what if we could do this? It's the real deal. So there's high tension. There's a lot of anger. You know where <laughs> it's it's a real work environment. And the thing you have to do uh, look at is this. You've got to appreciate the people. I mean, on that call there were two hundred and I think it got to two hundred and fifty nine people. They started to drop off. Obviously, people are work tomorrow. But you've got to commend these guys. Most of these people work full time. They finish work, they call into this meeting to gain a new experience because probably they're fed up of their old job or they want to earn more money or they want to apply for a higher role. And, um, and obviously you have a few people that are unemployed and this is the opportunity to get a better job. And you've got to understand that um, it's not easy because they're not getting paid for this. This is work experience, voluntary work experience. Um, so calling into the call, being shouted at, um, um, being told that your work is rubbish, and um, and and then having to go back to the drawing board or waiting to present for over two weeks and then the day you're supposed to present you can't present because there are other ish stuff, stuff they're talking about is frustrating. But what is it building? It's building character. It's building experience because it's no different from what happens out there. You know, um, I even think I'm 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 cool compared to some stakeholders out stakeholders out there who are absolutely bonkers. You know. Um, um, but the good news, and then also there are people who are, who are just waiting for you to mess up. Over here, you will mess up, but we'll correct you, you know. Um, and I believe, I've always told people, perfection is righting your wrongs until there are no more wrongs to right. You know, and um, we've got to strive for perfection. We don't necessarily have to achieve perfection, we've got to strive for it. Now, if there are a thousand wrongs and you end up fixing 800 of them, you're still 800 right better than the 1,000 wrongs you had. You know, so um, it's so important that we um, we continue to gain experience and commit the time and make the sacrifice because the end result is a high paying job that changes your life and you're looking at four or five hundred pounds a day. Now, um, a lot of people have always wondered how do our candidates get those jobs? Well, you can see today, you've seen the real deal. Uh, you're probably watching, you were confused. In fact, I guarantee that most people that were listening to this before <laughs> have probably loved that a long time ago. You know, but um, we wanted to show you what our sponsor meetings are about. We wanted to show you what the real deal is. And um, I hope that you've learned a lot. I hope that you have had an opportunity to get an idea of what goes on here. But I don't want you to be afraid and think it is too difficult. Um, this is why we give you 8 to 12 weeks, sometimes 6 months subscription, so that it, take, it takes time, but you will get it. Uh, so, um, if you're planning on joining us, go to our website www.careerinsights.tv and uh, just set up your free account and um, get started. And uh, we look forward to joining you in this next sponsor meeting. In the meantime, take care and God bless. Bye bye.